Hey everybody, happy FNAF anniversary! Yeah, I think we're, yeah, we're on year 9. This is year 9, good lord. Despite that fact, my channel's older than FNAF, which is weird to think about. Most of you didn't show up until after FNAF, so it doesn't count, I guess. So, uh, normally at the end of every year, I do a plush collection video of every FNAF plushie and other plushie I got in that year. And it's supposed to compile into one big collection series where I, you should get to see my whole FNAF and everything plush collection every year together. However, figured for this year's anniversary, I would do something special. I would show every single piece of FNAF merchandise in general that I own. Or at the very least, it's considered part of the collection. Included but not limited to plushies, action figures, mystery minis, la da 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 da, everything! So yeah, obviously this isn't like the biggest FNAF collection ever, because I don't own everything. I probably own like at least like 60% of it though, it's, it's, it's a lot. But saying I do will be better for the title, so yay! And maybe if I make it big and bombastic and cool, I'll end up on Consumer L's a second time. Anyways, uh, we're gonna actually start with posters. I got, I got a couple of these in my room. This is the ultimate FNAF character poster. It's got a lot of characters from the first six games. They're all on here. Uh, however, this is this, this definitely isn't the only FNAF poster I want. I've been meaning to get that one security breach one for a really long time, and I just haven't gotten around to it. We've also got these bad boys. These are little stickers I got, like, you know, those little supermarket machine thingies. Uh, you get these little stickers. I put them on the wall. There's a bunch back here behind this poster that I accidentally covered up. Uh, there's a Nightmare Chica, Wither, Golden Freddy, BB, Twabani, Let's Eat, Fun Time. And a bunch of screenshots from the first game. There's also this little spring trap poster. It looks really cool. Last but not least, turns the poster category. These are a lot of the McFarland toy instruction manuals. Uh, these have all the different, like, probably peel it through. You can probably see, yeah, these are the different sets. That's actually one for Nightmare BB. Uh, they, they put these little posters in the middle, and they're all over my wall. I got these ones from FNAF 2. Uh, this one of the plushies, which actually I don't think this is an instruction manual. This is just a poster like the, the spring trap one. And this one of Funtime Fweddy and Funtime Foxy. And lastly, here is a poster, which I think is uh, the screenshot uh, from the first game's trailer. You got Bonnie, Freddy, and Chica standing on stage. And it's been back here all the way since 2016. I never moved it. Okay, sorry, that was, that was rough. I had to grab some miscellaneous stuff that I forgot about and kind of tuck it away. So it's time to start with the plushies. I'm going to actually start with Hex because... Uh, because Hex is probably the, 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 the easiest one to lose track of because of all the parts, and I don't want to lose them in the pile. First up, we have the Hex Freddy plush, released by Daco and Hex Brand, his little brand. That is little guy. He's awesome. He's fluffy. He's got the Magnus. All the stuff you'd expect from Hex plushie. He looks very cute. And then we got Hex Bonnie, also very fluffy, uh, with his guitar and more magnets, obviously. Very awesome, very cute. I like this little guy a lot. This gets down there. Then we have Hex Chica with her little cupcake, her bib, feetsies. I like the silver toes. She's cool, very fluffy, good plushie. Well, little knot in the back of her bib. It's neat. And then we got Hex Foxy. I like that you can lift up his uh, look, lift up his little eye patch, and there's still an eye underneath there. It looks cool. I like the little endo parts. Oh, his foot's backwards. I um, didn't get the toys or the fanverse ones. I just wasn't a big fan of how some of those looked, and I just didn't feel like getting them. However, I'm probably going to get the Withered's Mangle and Springtrap, at least, uh, before I just kind of stop collecting Hex stuff, because these are very expensive. And then we have Hex Fredbear. Basically just a recolored Freddy. However, he looks very nice. And he's got the walkie-talkie from Sitter Location. He looks cool. I like it. And then we have Hex Spring Bonnie. Also very cute. Pizza cutter, not like a knife, unlike my next plushie, which does have a knife. We'll see what that is in a second, though. Daw. And here is my custom William inside Spring Bonnie Hex plushie that I made. Uh, all the spots with the magnets have purple bits inside it, so you can see they're connected. And this was actually planned to be for a video, however, I have not made that video yet, and it will probably come at some point. So yeah, it'll be cool. But yeah, I mean, obviously I did like the like the whole like I made a custom hex plush video, but like an actual plush episode with this guy. So yeah, oh, just dropped him. There we go. All the hex guys. Yippee. Next up are the Jumbo Freddy plushie released by Funko. The biggest Freddy plushie I have. It's pretty big, obviously. Soft pulp nose. Got this a long, long time ago. And I haven't picked up any uh, Jumbo plushies since. But uh, I do actually kind of want to get that tie-dye Funtime Foxy because I think that pattern's really cute and I like the colors. 
So I might get that one and maybe the candy one too. But other than that, I haven't bought really any Jumbo plushies since. So yeah, there's Jumbo Freddy. As well as uh, this. And you're probably wondering, what is this? Why did you just buy a second Jumbo Freddy? Um, the thing is, this is one of the most, I think, obscure bootlegs I've ever seen. Me and my friends went down a really big rabbit hole when we found this guy, and I picked him up. He's only like 50 bucks, so it wasn't like a super, super big uh, dent in my pocket. And it's just so bizarre to me. I've never seen a Freddy bootleg that looks like this. Like, most of the Jumbo Freddy bootlegs don't look like this. And it just so oddly looks like a Sanchi plush. Like, it's even got, like, the Sanchi tag. Like, obviously, there's been plenty of bootleg Sanchi tags. I have no idea what this is. If anyone has this specific Jumbo Freddy and wants to tell me how they got it or any any info on it, please let me know. I, I'm very curious because this guy is so, is so bizarre. I just thought I wanted to own a really bizarre piece of FNAF bootleg plush history because, like I said... I've never seen pictures of this guy. This is such a, like I said, a bizarre bootleg Freddy. Speaking of that, I should probably buy the, the bootleg plush of my custom. That would be, that would be, that probably is an, 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 another thing on the list of things to buy. Here's a couple more uh, non Sanchi Funko plushies before we get to the main star. Here is the Daco makeshift plush based off of his FNAF show attire. Figure this guy counts. I'll stick him with his hex bros since he did make them. And he sings also. Oh. I don't think it works very well, but get the point. Here's a Good Stuff Freddy. It's actually the only Good Stuff plush I own, but I believe I got this at a carnival one time. And he just kind of managed to stick around, so, you know, pretty cool. Or at the very least, he's the only, like, Good Stuff plush that I have that's been untouched by, like, customing it. Here's a couple of U2's plushies. Uh, I have the Glamrock Chica standing uh, U2's plush. I like this little gal. Glamrock Chica is my favorite security breach character, so I wanted to pick her up. Here's the Vanny U2's plushie sitting down. Also very cute. And uh, the daycare attendant one from the collector's edition of Security Breach. Here it is. And it's even got the tag still. So yeah. Little bells. Sticking down here. So yeah. Now we're getting to the goods. Sanchi. First up. Wave 1 Freddy. Here he is. Well, actually, technically, this is the second release of Freddy under Fat Mojo. Uh... Originally, they released under Sanchi, then Fat Mojo, and then they came back in 2021 with a new set of Sanchi guys. So, yeah. Don't really plan on getting the new release of them because I already got these guys, so there's not really a point in my opinion. Here is Sanchi Bonnie. Fun fact, uh, him, Freddy, and Foxy, I got all at the same time for Christmas of 2015, and that was when I started making videos. I was absolutely excited to get these guys. So, I guess here's Foxy. <laughs> Might as well introduce him. I got a little piece of fluff on his ear. Or his eye. Yeah, I like them. These guys are all cute and hold a very special place in my heart. I love all of them. Ugh. Then about one year later, I picked up the Sanchi Chica plushie when it dropped. Along with Mr. Cupcake. This is actually, I think, my first YouTube check I spent on this and the Golden Freddy. And other things too, but this was like that was like the, 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 the special happy purchase. On to bigger and better things. Speaking of Golden Freddy. Here he is. He's actually sustained some damage over the years. Uh, he got a big gash in his foot somehow, but uh, we sewed him up since. Still got a little bit, uh, bit of visible wear, but it's whatever. He's got character. I like Golden Freddy a lot. He's a very good Sanchi plushie. And about two, three years ago, I picked up Fredbear. I actually got this guy for a steal for the time. Uh, if you don't know about Fredbear, he is a limited edition, and they are never making any more Fredbears. This is it. They're, they're never making any more. The ones that are out are the only ones that are ever going to be made. And yeah, so I own one. And this guy I got for $70 in like 2021. Sounds like a lot, I know, but considering he's worth like 300 to most people that post him, I got I got him for like a steal. I was very fortunate to get him when I did. So yeah, there is all five, San or six, six Sanchi plushies, including Carl, his little magnets. But yeah, these are my favorite FNAF plushies ever, and I will love them dearly. There's some Funko ones that also are tied with these, but like when it comes to like the full set, these are awesome. I love these guys. If you can pick up the wave, the the second edition, third edition of the of the Sanchi plushies, do it. They're awesome. Ugh, I almost forgot this guy. This is a bootleg spring trap I picked up very recently at my local fair. Uh, I kind of got gypped. Not gonna lie, this thing was like twenty dollars, but I bought it for the souvenir and the memory's sake. And I I don't know, I could pass this this spring trap bootleg looks so stupid. I couldn't pass him up. Another bootleg for the collection. Oh god, no! Springtrap, you got a lanyard around him! There, him and Freddy are tied together forever. Now we're on to wave one of Funko. 
Here is a Funko Freddy from Wave 1. Still got the tush tag. Here's a Funko Bonnie, cotton tail and all. Love this little guy. Here is a Funko Foxy. And here's a Funko Chica. Again, no cupcake. Very different from the Sanchi one. Probably the only one of these three that differs very heavily from the main guy. And I do actually have a Funko Golden Freddy. However, it has been turned into Withered Golden Freddy. So technically there is a Funko Golden Freddy in my collection. It's just not in peak condition. Here is a uh, toy slash Funtime Foxy. Very good plush, happy they made this one. I imagine the reason they did is because of the Toy Foxy plushie inside a uh, FNAF 4 closet. Made, more, made the most sense to make this one since it is an actual plush in the canon games. Here is the Hot Topic exclusive Shadow Freddy plush. Tied for my favorite FNAF plush of all time. I love him so much, he's so awesome. And here is the GameStop exclusive Toy Freddy. His hat is peeling a bit, but yeah. Sadly, my Wave 1 is still technically not complete. As I said, I don't have Golden Freddy, but maybe one day I'll get them. I was gonna put these way later in the video for miscellaneous, however, I guess it just makes the most sense to put them here now. Uh, these are the bag, two of the bags. I don't know where the other couple went, but this is the two of the bags that went to the Hex plushies. Uh, I can stick them up here. And the bag that went to the makeshift taco. So yeah, there they are. Next up is Wave 2. First up, we have Spring Trap. Absolutely love this guy. Uh, one of my favorite Funko plushies ever. I love him. He's so cool. One actually was the first Wave 2 plush I picked up alongside with uh, Mangle. Next up is Nightmare Freddy. Pretty neat plush, even if he's, like, uh, oddly enough, really light. I don't know why they made him so light. Toy Freddy's supposed to be this color. They kind of, they kind of, I, I keep saying this, I swapped their colors. They're supposed to be the other way around. Then we have Nightmare Foxy. Also too light. That's kind of they just kind of just like stuck accessories on the original Wave One plushies. They didn't even bother making them darker like they're supposed to be. And then we have Toy Chica, a very very cute FNAF plush. I'm kind of sad they don't do any more in the style. I think this looks very adorable. Easily probably the most stylized FNAF plush out there, but one of the cutest in my opinion, if not the cutest. And then we have the Toy Cupcake, or just the Cupcake. I know they don't tend to, it's not technically called the Toy Cupcake, but it's based off of the Toy Cupcake design, so therefore it's Toy Cupcake. Meh. Then we have the puppet. Funny story, uh, the reason the arms look like this is cause they, this plush got ruined. Um, in back a long, long time ago, uh, I recorded an unreleased music video for like, I think it was the Oogie Boogie Man song. And it was supposed to be with Golden Freddy and the puppet. And I started filming it. And then I realized the tape that I put around her arms uh, ruined it. It like got stuck, all the sticky stuff got stuck on the plush and I couldn't get it off. Like I tried so hard. So I just said, screw it. And I covered it up with more felt. So, you know, it's, it, it, you can tell, but like, it's kind of hard unless you're like really paying attention. But yeah, she's forever like that now, sadly. Next up is the Mangle plush, Walmart exclusive. Uh, I actually am still a Nightmare Mangle truther. This is Nightmare Mangle, and you can't change my mind, society. I don't care if society silences me, I will still be loud. Anyways, like I said, this is the first wave two plush I got alongside this guy. Then we have Nightmare Bonnie exclusive to Toys R Us. I really still really like this plush. Uh, fun fact, this is actually not my first Nightmare Bonnie. It's actually the second Nightmare Bonnie. The first one I had uh, had a very wonky eye, but then I ended up getting this one because I think uh, my cousin gave this one to me a long time ago because he stopped liking FNAF plushies. Uh, so he gave me this one for free. Thanks, man. Uh, and this guy looks so much better, I decided to just use him instead. Though I will remember the first one because he is the entire reason I, I made him Russian. It's because he had like a crazy like messed up eye. So I was thinking like mad scientist like Russian voice. And that's why he, he is the way he is today. Then I got the GameStop exclusive Nightmare Cupcake. Easily, I think one of the best Funko plushies objectively. I mean, it, 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 that's Nightmare Cupcake. I don't really think he could have gotten it any more, any more correct. That, that, that's it. There you go. He got it. This is a good prop for anyone else to do like a Nightmare Chica cosplay. I mean, if you're willing to pay the price for it kind of expensive but i mean that's a good prop too but like come on it's a toy cupcake like you can't be the actual nightmare cupcake and the hot topic exclusive highly controversial toy bonnie i like him though he has his charm i think he's still pretty good i think people that say he's ugly are just haters and they need to learn to accept people the way they are literally moving on to wave three with sister location this is the first physical game based wave um, here is Circus Baby. 
still a really good plush. I, you know, I know everyone kind of was mad they switched this, like, human body style, but I think it works. I think she still looks super cute. And this design kind of got adopted into game canon. Uh, outside of making her limbs thicker, this is a plush design that's used for the plush babies in FNAF VR. So, it's canon now. Next up is, again, another controversial plush, Ballora. But, I like her. There, there, uh, there's definitely, I think the, the prototype one definitely would have been better, but this one's still good. I, I don't know. Maybe it's not good, but it has good memories. Let's, let's, let's say that. Next up is Funtime Foxy. Pretty nice plush. Uh, this, this one is also notorious, because, uh, when Funko first started doing printing, it wasn't very good. You know, a lot of it kind of peeled. And this one, you can kind of tell, there's a lot of, like, white splotches on it pretty often. But, you know, I still like the Funtime Foxy plush. It's, it, it's a nice plush. And then we have Funtime Freddy. Again, not a great plush, but... It has a lot of good memories. So I guess that makes it good in its own way. And bon bon. Then we have the final boss of the game, Ennard. Uh, I don't know if this is controversial. I think that the gray eye looks way better than the black eye. It just looks less jarring and sticks out way less because it matches the background of this eye. It just it just looks better. I don't know why the, that people think the black eye looks better. It just doesn't. It's weird. There's very few times that Funko's ever deliberately like changed a, like a product design after its initial like first wave drop. Um, this is one of them. Very odd. Then we have the three exclusives from this wave. Here's Bonnet from Walmart. This along with these four were uh, plushies I got on vacation one summer, and I was so happy. I was overly ecstatic because I couldn't find these guys for months in stores, but I finally found them on vacation like ways away. Here is the Exotic Butters plush, or Mr. Butters if you're a fan of this channel. All the butters are removable from Hot Topic. Uh, I know that a lot of, especially after this plush released later, uh, there'd be a lot of, there'd be a lot of plushies and hot topics that would just, uh, be that. People would just steal the butters. So, uh, there's probably a lot of people that bought a basket <laughs> and no butters, but I have all of them still, even after all these years, I've always managed to keep track of all six of the butters and they all stay perfectly needed in this box. If you want an exotic butters prop for an entered cosplay or just to have in your room, here it is. I do miss these kinds of plushies. I think that they were nice because they had, they, like, even if they weren't necessarily characters you wanted to buy for, like, a collection, they were good little props, and I think that was what was neat about them. And last, we have the Target, question mark, exclusive, Lulbit. I believe this showed up in Walgreens as well, but then again, I think later releases of Nightmare Bonnie also showed up in Walgreens because Toys R Us went out of business. It's kind of complicated. I don't know. Either way, Lulbit was a good plush. It definitely fixed a lot of the printing problems and other problems that the original Funtime Foxy had, so yeah, it's a good plush. And we got a FNAF World plush, our one FNAF World plush, guys, we did it. And the reason I say that is because sister location, Lulbit doesn't have a body, so technically speaking, that's FNAF World Lulbit. I don't know if that logic holds up, but it's mine, so shut up. Here we are. This is probably the most controversial wave of FNAF plushies ever. Most people will highly regard this one as the worst one ever. Um, but yeah, so this is the Twisted Ones. <laughs> this one was made for the book, and a lot of people hate these guys. It's because the terrible printing, and the bad designs, and just all around not really great plushies. So, you know, I get it. I don't really like these guys either. I mean, why do you think they haven't been in videos in like five years? It's been a while. Yeah, I don't know. I've never been a really big fan of these guys. They're okay. I mean, if you like the Twisted Ones, then great. You got some book merch, but... Other than that, just buy the Mystery Maze or something, man. These aren't really worth it. But yeah, here's Twisted Freddy. Here is Twisted Bonnie. Oddly enough, he's purple instead of blue. God, the, the, like I see why people don't like these now. Like, look at look at the way this the, the felt on the ear looks, and then the front where it's printed. Like, that is that is like two different colors. Here's Twisted Chica. This character was actually made exclusively for merchandise. They do not appear anywhere in the book. Here's Twisted Foxy, and you know since more modern Foxy plush releases actually have the hook. It is just disgusting to see this, like, weird flesh stub. Like, man... I mean, don't re-release this plush, because the twist, like the, the Twisted Ones aren't really that good, but just, man, the, this is just foul. I will say the one thing I do like about this plush is it uses the, uh, like, the, fan, the Phantom Foxy material. I FORGOT PHANTOM Fo I made a severe, continuous lapse in my judgment, and I don't expect to be forgiven. Anyway, uh, here's Phantom Foxy. Uh, yeah, he came out in Target with Wave 2. Um, he's got a- he's got a unique metal material, which they would later, uh, reuse for the FNAF AR plushies. 
He's not very accurate to the original. He doesn't even look anything like Withered Foxy. Not missing his hand, and he's green for some reason when Phantom Fox is actually, you know, an orangish red. Um, and actually, it'd be kind of ironic because Phantom Foxy would later use these colors in FNAF VR, which also looks kind of bad. But yeah, yeah. Okay, just stick in between these two, I guess. Just whatever. What was I saying? Oh right, Twisted Wolf. Anyways, here's Twisted Wolf. I actually think this is definitely the best of the five Twisted Ones. Uh, he's got, I like this very fluffy material he's got for like his cheeks and his, and his back. However, I think this, this I, they should have done more of like the glitch overlay. It's just kind of like a weird seam down the middle. It looks a little strange. Not good, but the best one. I lied, it's Theodore. Theodore's the best one. I like this guy. This is actually a really good plush. Again, this is a good prop plush. Like if you want to like have like a Charlie cosplay, this is a fantastic plush. I love this one. This is actually like the, the only good one. And now we move to the worst. Here's Stanley. All right, you want me to lay out the reasons why this plush sucks? One, look at it. Just look at it. It's like a weird lump. Like, I don't understand what, what was the design process here? It's like the wheels are like flat pieces and it's all printed and like, it, it, just, doesn't, it just doesn't look good. It looks bad. Not even gonna mention, who wants Stanley? The only reason you would want this plush is because you want to have Theodore, Stanley, and Ella. But guess who they didn't make? Ella! So this plush is dumb! It serves zero purpose! You sh- I don't think I'm gonna get through without getting demonetized. Flash the guy with the- Might as well throw these guys in here. Here's Blacklight Cupcake. Um, yeah, this is the only Blacklight plush I own, actually. Uh, this is the way that was between this and, uh, the next one. I really like Blacklight Cupcake. It's a good blush. It glows in the dark. It's neat. I, I would not buy more the whole wave though. This is just for the gimmick and because it looks like a green rotten cupcake. However, here's an actually decent plush that they released in that time. Baby. He was from Hot Topic. He was good. I like him. Here's another interlude with uh, with another miscellaneous plush I forgot to throw in this uh, little, little, little crew. Uh, these, I think Sanchi made these. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think these are like little like keychain collector clips that they made will hang on your backpack uh, they look kind of ugly uh, if you don't know who finance of Froakies is then uh fnaf youtuber plus tuber former fnaf plus tuber uh he he had a character named ron ron i laughed at the video and i was his friend and i was like i saw this little guy at the store and i'm like oh that'd be funny so i cut his legs off and made ron ron you know he's just, just that's what he is uh, but yeah he's, he goes in the next up is the pizza sim wave uh i think this came out late 2018 it was about a year after the game came out and, you know, this wave is notorious for not finishing any of the character sets that are in it, which is a bit annoying, but, you know, individual plushies are fine. Here's Rockstar Freddy. He's, in fact, a teddy, and he had to be rescued, rivetingly, off the roof of an elementary school. And he's great. I like him. He's a good plush. There he goes. This is a return uh, to, like, a quality standard for Funko. These plushies feature almost no more no printing, and it made people very happy. Speaking of which, here's Rockstar Foxy. Who does actually have printing on his legs? Nah, but uh, this plush is pretty good. Other than the fact that he has no teeth, I don't know why. Rockstar Foxy is one of the most like tooth mouthed foxies. I'm surprised I didn't give him any teeth. Um, but yeah, there's there's the there's the little parrot on his shoulder, like Bon Bon. And it's really cool they kept it in a consistent style. I like that. Uh, yeah, this plush is good. It's pretty good. Next up is Lefty, uh, the only scrap animatronic we got in the set. Pretty good. I like him. I colored in the white in his eye because it bugged the hell out of me. But you know, other than that, he's good. Neat. Here is Helpy, another good prop plush. Though I do think if you're gonna get a prop of Helpy, you probably want to get the, the like the like the half jumbo one. I uh, don't have that one, but you know he's still pretty cute. I like this little guy. Here's L Chip, kind of an oddball. Pretty cool that Chipper got merch. Uh, Scott, I think that was like a big thing he said in the interview. It's like you got merch, Chipper. You got merch. That was actually I think the first tease of the FNAF 6 wave we ever got. It's pretty neat. Yeah, I guess he also got a little beaver tail. And we have Pig Patch, also a pretty good plushie. His big snout, little belly button, little tail. Good plush. I like him. Head's a little, head's a little long though. And we got Orville with his fat face. Uh, he's pretty cute. I'm happy they picked Orville. He's a good one. Um, again, they had four out of the five mediocre. Like we're this close to greatness. And now here, <laughs> actually, I think these are definitely in like my top ten FNAF plushies ever. These next two. I just think that Happy Frog and Mr. Hippo are very cute and super accurate plushies to their to their in-game counterparts. And these guys look almost perfect. I love Happy Frog. It's a good plushie. She's my favorite mediocre melody. Uh, and Mr. Hippo. It's pretty cool. He's a really good plush. 
Again, it's very cute, very game accurate, super nice. I like these two guys. And I think this is a part of the main wave. I don't think it came out till later, but here's Candy Cadet. Um, it was a Hot Topic exclusive. I also really don't like this plush. They didn't stylize him like at all, and the, the printing was kind of ugly. And not to mention, they didn't print the back of the arms or the antenna, so when you turn them around, it just looks really off. I'm not a big fan of this guy. They could have done him much better, but I guess for the Candy Cadet fans out there, uh, he's pretty good. And also, I, I, I don't know, this, spoilers for FNAF Ruin, but man, when, when he showed up at the very end of Ruin, I got way too excited. I got way too excited. I don't know why I was so happy, but it was cool. I, I was very excited at that moment. God dang it. Next up is a pretty weird release period for uh, FNAF plushies. Uh, we didn't get a major game for quite a while after FNAF 6. Uh, we had VR, but Funko neglected to make a wave for that game. Uh, and even then, the Security Breach plushies came out way before, uh, the game did. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll have some words for those, those guys, but, uh, you know, that, that horse has already been kind of beaten to death. However, here is a couple just random releases that they have between the games. First up, Spring Bonnie. This came out not long after VR did. I really love this plush. I think this is easily... My second favorite FNAF plush, or tied with Shadow Freddy. These are my, these are, those two are my favorite guys. This one is just so cute. Has such good charm to it. I love her so much. Or him. I don't know. It's him, her, rabbit, who cares? That means it can be interpreted as either, stop telling me it's a dude. Actually, you know, I think that, that, that comment type is eased up. And then, uh, I don't remember the order these came in, so I'm gonna give my best shot at it. Security Puppet, another FNAF 6 plush. Came out for Hot Topic exclusive. I don't know if I mentioned that one was Hot Topic exclusive. It was also Hot Topic exclusive. Likewise, this was Hot Topic exclusive. Good plushie. Another FNAF 6 guy to add to the cast. It's very cute. Another puppet variant. And then there was FNAF Frostbear. <laughs> Freddy Frostbear from FNAF AR. I was going to say FNAF AR or Freddy Frostbear, and I said both. And I screwed up my speech. But yeah, good plush. I like this guy. I like the bow tie. I like the plush. Good plush. That's nice. Now we have Phantom BB. This plush sucks! It's just, it's like got this weird scratchy fabric and it's just unappealing. It's, it's just not good. It's not good. It's like a carnival toy and it looks ugly. It just, like, you need, like at least this guy is soft and like has a cool metallic material. You didn't even bother doing it for this one. Why? They regressed again. We, f how quickly we fell from grace. But now we have... The Notorious. Well, I guess there were the spring colorway ones, but I didn't buy those because I don't like them. I actually do think Chocolate Bonnie came out between Frostbear and this next wave, so if that's the case, here's Chocolate Bonnie. Another one from FNAF AR. Pretty good. I like it. It's very cute. Good plush. It uses the Spring Bonnie pattern. It looks nice. All right, time for the Notorious Security Breach wave. Uh, uh These plushies are infamous for A, missing a lot of the details, and B, the first release of these guys had super terrible, disgusting, ew, scratchy fabric, and everybody hated them. Uh, and then they re-released and made them better. So, you know, uh, still missing a lot of details, which is why I customized mine and they look better with, well, better in quotes. You know what I mean? They have more detail, and that's why I did that, because I think these guys look way cuter when they actually are, like, don't look super, like, weirdly bland and oddly under-designed. But yeah, there's Glamrock Freddy. He's a good plush, even though I, I customized him. Here's Glamrock Chica, easily the least, uh, changed plush of the bunch. I like this little gal. She's cute. Definitely the best of the four. Or five. Here's Montgomery Gator. It's lemon lime looking ass. Again, pretty, pretty, pr not, not super custom, highly customized, but still looks good. Here's Roxanne Wolf. Probably the most changed. I fixed her hair and gave her a tail. And fixed her makeup a little bit. And last but not least, Vanny. Man, I, hey, for anyone out there that sees this and goes, Oh, that Fanny plush looks pretty good. Uh, and you don't know what the normal Fanny Funko plush looks like, then I've got news for you, pal. Yeah, I don't know. It's subjective. Maybe you think this looks abhorrently ugly. I don't know. Then again, I, I can't pretend that the normal Fanny plush doesn't have its charms. Because I own one still. <laughs> can't say the same for the other four. However, we get to that when we get to the duplicates. Bleh. Uh, next wave was Curse of Dreadbear. Finally, they bothered doing some Help Wanted stuff, and even though it was like a year and a half after Help Wanted came out, um, this technically has six plushies, though one of them one of them came out way later than the other ones did, but I'm still putting them in here. First up is Dreadbear, and this guy's awesome. He has like no printing, the colors are accurate, the plush is accurate, he's cute, I love him. He's great. Probably one of the best Funko plushies in a long time. At least like when we're talking like 
the ones that like we've said so far. And then we have the 5.5 inch Walmart exclusive Dread Bear. Yeah, I don't... If you ask me why they made this, I couldn't give you an answer. But you know, he's, he's 5.5 inches. He's 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 got all the same details. So you know, if you wanted a 5.5 inch Dreadbear, this is this is your guy. And we got Jackal Bonnie, a uh, completely different style from Nightmare Bonnie. But yeah, I'm not even gonna lie, this is probably the worst one in the wave. But he's not the worst, I guess. He could be like Twisted Ones, but he's not like that. So <laughs> it's, it's better. It's better than that. Then we got Jacko Chica. I actually like this one. Uh, it's 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 pretty charming, I think. Uh, outside of the gums, I don't know why they gave her gums, but other than that, like, it's good. I like her. She she got the toy chica feet that we haven't had in a long time, so you know it's nice to see her return to form, I guess. And we got Grim Foxy. Uh, I don't really like the colors on this guy, but other than that, he's good. And he's the first Foxy plush with a hook. My God, it's glorious. It's a hook on a Foxy plush. They did it. They finally did it. I don't know how I feel about it on like normal Foxy, but ones like this, this this guy needs a hook or else he just has a metal stump and it looks stupid. Looking at you, Twisted Foxy. There you are, you suck. And the last one in this wave was Captain Foxy. I like this plush. New 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 pattern and you know his hat looks nice. His clothes look nice. He's got his metal feet and his hook. This is a good plush. I like it. These next few are from kind of a longer period of time, like release, like all these didn't come out at once. However, this is the bulk of the FNAF AR stuff, so I'm gonna put it all together. First up, we have VR Toy Freddy. Uh, I think he's cute. That's probably all the points I can give him though. He's not really accurate or like, I don't know what they, they thought with the nose here, just why is it flat? And we got System Error Toy Bonnie, and I think this plush sucks i just i don't like it 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 doesn't look like toy bonnie and it just it just it's just weird i like him even the the the, uh, the cursed wave 2 toy bonnie is better than this oh yeah system error toy chica again about the same quality as the vr toy freddy it, did i say system error i meant high score this is high score toy chica about the same quality it's really just gets cute points but even then this the, the wave 2 toy chica is just cuter than this one it, it, it just by a long shot is better and the last one in the common wave is radioactive foxy uh this is probably the best one of the four but that's not saying much it's still kind of all right you know it's radioactive foxy i don't really know what you expect for all my radioactive foxy heads, uh, congrats, you, you did it. Then we got the three exclusives that came out directly with the way. We have, uh, Livewire Toy Freddy. This one's pretty good, actually. This also has, like, literally no reason for the nose to be flat. I don't know why they made the nose flat, especially when they gave Twisted Mare Toy Bonnie and Radioactive Foxy a plastic nose. I don't know why this guy's nose is flat. But yeah, I think the, the embroidery on the, uh, on, like, the electric effect on the eyes looks pretty good. Yeah, this, this one's not, this one's all right. This one's not bad. He also gets cute points. And then we have probably one of like the most pristine FNAF plushies I've ever like witnessed my eyes on is this Shamrock Freddy. I don't know why he just, he looks so perfect. <laughs> but yeah, here's Shamrock Freddy, another FNAF AR character. He looks pretty good actually. I think this is honestly a really good one. This is, this is easily much better than the rest of the, the rest of the wave. And then we have Candy Freddy, a Funko OC, because because this never 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 was in FNAF AR, despite the fact that they they put it on the tag. So yeah, thanks guys. Now these next four, like I said, are were definitely released way after the rest of these guys were, but again, still still AR, so we're gonna put them together. Here's Liberty Chica. <laughs> This plush is so dumb. I don't know. It's cute. Again, it's very. This one gets cute points, and it's just so dumb that I, I'm. I'm very. I'm happy that they made this one. It's just so silly. I like it. It gets. It gets those points. It's good. Then we have Frostbite BB. Still has his tag, actually. Uh, yeah. This Frostbite BB is pretty good. I like him. Especially again, if you're a Frostbite BB head. There you go. This guy's for you. And he's pretty detailed. So yeah. And then we have Blackheart Bonnie. Um, again, this this one's like using a very strange Bonnie pattern, so he's very malformed. However, the details on him are very good. I like the cracked embroidery down here. It makes him actually look like he really has like a crack in him. It looks very good. Um, but yeah, the rest of the the rest of the plush is is all right. He's all right. There, I was trying to get the focus for like ten years. Yeah, there's the crack in the heart and that. And lastly, is the Firework Freddy plush. Here he is in all his glory. He's using the pattern for the tie-dye Freddy, which is a plush we'll get to, but we haven't got to yet. But yeah, here is Firework Freddy. He's pretty good. 
pretty good. If you if you like Firework Freddy, I guess. All right, so after they released the bulk of the FNAF AR plushies, they released the tie-dye wave, which is a bunch of tie-dye uh, reskins of Wave 1 and Springtrap, I guess. But yeah, I actually like these because they have a new pattern. And honestly, I think most of these plushies have pretty good tie-dye colors. Freddy is not really one of them, but it's not the worst. I do think he looks pretty decent. But look at his face. He's very cute. It's like a good combination of detail and like cuteness factor. I think makes this easily the definitive Freddy, Freddy pattern for any future plushies. I'm just saying, Funko, if you want to make mo uh, like a tie-in set of FNAF plushies for the movie, just use these patterns. They're great. And maybe like make them look a little bit more like the movie characters, like with the colors and details and stuff. Next up is Tie-Dye Bonnie. Uh, this is a very good one. I love the colors picked here, like the pink and the, the purple and the blue looks very good combined here. And again, very cute, good pattern, nice plush. Here is Tie-Dye Chica. I love the oranges. Uh, the bib looks pretty nice with the printing. It looks good. Very cute. I love the hair. This is, this is a nice plush. Good, good, good Tie-Dye Chica. Now we have Tie-Dye Foxy. This is probably the ugliest out of all of them, but he's still, he's still got his charms, I think. He's got a hook, too. Pretty nice with the hook. I like him. Now we have Tie-Dye Funtime Foxy. This is my favorite one in the wave. She's just so cute. I love the color choices. The, the, the pink blue and white combined very well. It's like a cotton candy color. Uh, very, very good. Very good. Love this one. Then we have the Walmart exclusive. You got the tag here. Tie-dye spring trap. Here he is. Uh, thank God, the one piece of spring trap merch to make his eyes actually silver, unlike the rest of him. Because, yeah, guys, this is the silver eyes. It's just, I'll name the book after it. I feel like I made that tangent in another video, but there it is again, I guess. Anyway, also, this is the big, I think this is the Hot Topic, yeah, Hot Topic exclusive jumbo uh, tie-dye foxy. I just saw it one day and thought it looked neat, so I picked it up. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say jumbo. It's like, it's like, it's like slightly, it's like about Sanchi size. I don't feel like grabbing it, but yeah, that's Sanchi size pretty much, and yeah, not really, not nearly as big as that guy. There we go, I fixed them. Here is a mini wave that released alongside the tie-dye plushies. We have the FNAF Fanverse wave, uh, consisting of three plushies, all exclusive to GameStop. First up, we have Candy the Cat. I think this plush is absolutely perfect. Uh, I know Emil and Kane work very closely with Funko to make this guy and the Pop Goes plush that will come after this, and they did a fantastic job. I love him. These guys are great. Here is Pop Goes. Other than the printing on the face, I think this guy's good. Honestly, I, I think I think especially I've grown over time to like him more more because, you know, his face is a little ugly, but he's a weasel. He's gonna look a little ugly. He's gotta look like a weasel. And then we have Blake the Badger. And you're probably wondering, whoa, why does your Blake look like that? It's because I gave him his evergreen attire. Uh, this is the, like, the belt and the, the, um, what's it called? This, like, uh, lanyard he would use, he has in the game. Uh, and I gave it to him for videos and stuff. Didn't know, uh, Funko sneak, sn snook behind Kane Carter's back and made Blake without his knowledge, and they based it off the old, ugly 2016 design and not the, the new one from the reboot. So that's kind of a shame, but I gave him his attire. Uh, don't worry guys, this isn't, like, attached or anything, this is just around the, the neck and the, the belt, so I could take it off without ruining the plush. It's, yeah, I didn't ruin it, so it's fine. If I ever need it for collector's sake, I can just cut it off, but for now, he's gonna stay the way he is. All right, y'all, we're down to it. The last two subsets of Funko plushies. Full wave and a mini wave, so let's get to it. First up is Balloon Circus, which released earlier this year. Here's Balloon Freddy. Uh, looks like a little younger kid Freddy. Uh, a lot of people thought these were for ruin, and then they weren't. So I guess spoilers, but also, yeah. Um, however, there was, like, uh, a note for, like, a carnival teaser in, in ruin, so... For, like, in, like, a beta map, so... I don't know, maybe they are making a Balloon Circus game one day, just not now. <laughs> Here's Balloon Foxy. Very mischievous little guy with his tail. I like him. He's cool. Here's Balloon Chica, and I think she's really adorable. This is a Walmart exclusive. Uh, I'm very happy they made this little gal. She's so cute. A little freckles. I think, I think out of the three, she's the most appealing to me. I don't know why. If they made Balloon Bonnie, maybe he would have been more appealing, but they did not, so we don't have Balloon Bonnie, sadly. Now we have Clown Freddy, or Circus Freddy. I actually don't remember which one it is, but I'm just gonna say Clown Freddy. Here's Clown Freddy. Face paint, got the red nose, got the big bow, got the vest. It's Clown Freddy. He's pretty cool. He's also very orange. But yeah, there's Clown Freddy. Now we got Clown Foxy. Uh, his ears are a little messed up. They're supposed to be more droopy than this. I don't know why they kind of they kind of stick up way more than they're supposed to sometimes. But when they when they actually droop down, they look they look kind of alright. But they're kind of not right now. But yeah, he's got a tail. All his face paint. He's very sad, very expressive. He's silly. I like him. 
And then we have my favorite plush in the wave, Circus Bonnie. I think he's super soft. I don't know why. It's probably the softest FNAF plush I've ever, like, seen. He's very, very soft. Um, yeah, he's got the big neck fluff. Got his big red nose. He's very derpy. Got the big bells on his ears. And they actually bother to print both sides. I'm looking at you, bucko. But, yeah, he's, uh, he's very good. I like him. But yeah, these two are definitely, like, my favorite plushies in this wave. But, yeah, good, good wave, good wave. Pretty decent. Well, okay. If they're just Funko Cs, definitely knocks this wave down a couple points. But if they're eventually for a game, then I, I guess it's better than that. And these next three plushies are brand new. Uh, brand new, practically. Uh, we got the Sun half of the daycare attendant from Security Breach. I even got the tag still on him and everything. Yeah, there he is. Big smile, big rays of sunshine. He's super cool. I love him. He's filled with detail, and I like that they brought back the humanoid body. I don't think we've had... We had Frostbite BB, but before then, I don't think, like, half of the... Like, any of these plushies between, like, Frostbite BB and normal BB. I think it was only just all the BBs. All the BBs had the human body. It was weird. This is the, this is the first one since BB and the first location one. But I like that they brought back the human body. I think it looks good on stuff like this. So, yeah. I like Sonny. He looks cool. However, he's a little big. I don't know why he's so big, but he's very good. He's very detailed. Super good. No, little to no printing. Very nice. Then we got Moon with his big old hat. Look at his big old hat. Big hat. I like him. He's super awesome. Also detailed. Very cute. If you're a Sun or Moon fan, definitely pick these guys up. These guys are adorable. And the action figures are also really good. I don't own them, but they're cool apparently. So everyone wants to call me. And this last guy I'm probably going to put over with these because it's bigger. But this is the uh, Eclipse plush, I think. I don't really know. This is a fusion of Sun and Moon. It's not marketed as Eclipse. Uh, however, this is very similar to the Eclipse character in Ruin, so it's hard to really say. Uh, it seems to be very similar, so I'm gonna imagine it is. And it's big! It's, like, much bigger than the other two. It's, like, it's more like this Foxy. Like, it's a big plush. But it's not quite Jumbo. So I don't know, because apparently they have a 16-inch Sun and Moon, and it's bigger than this one, so... I don't really know why they made it. It's exclusive to Hot Topic. It's pretty cool, though. I like it. It's neat. I bought him because he looked neat. And he was only, like, $20, and I had, like, a Hot Topic coupon, so I was like, why not? We'll stick him with these guys. Actually, I'll probably, you know, I'll, I'll move this Foxy over there, too, since he's not a standard size plush. There. But yeah, that is every unique Funko FNAF plush I own. And now, uh, to flipping that on its head, here's some duplicate plushies that I have. I'll throw them down here. Here is a duplicate Ennard. Uh, Black Eye Ennard, to be precise. This is the one I was talking about earlier. Uh, my Ennard actually has a stuffed hat. Uh, the, the plushies did not come like this. It was actually very floppy. Uh, however, I did not stuff Black Eye Ennard's hat. Here's a duplicate Nightmare Bonnie. Very, very pristine condition. Uh, yeah, outside of not having a tag or just tag, obviously. Here is a, another duplicate uh, Mr. Butters, or Exotic Butters, to each their own, I presume. Got Tush Tag and everything. I did mark the Tush Tag, though, so I knew that this was the duplicate, and all the Butters are marked, and the basket, so... I mean, it takes down collector's value, I guess, so, I mean, my bad if I resell it. <laughs> Here's a duplicate BB. Tag and all. Here's a duplicate Spring Bonnie. Has a touch tag, but no, 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 no normal tag, sadly. Here is a duplicate Security Puppet. It is tagged. Next to BB. Here is a duplicate Vanny, and this is actually with the old, crappy, scratchy fabric. Uh, not the new, nice, soft fabric. Where's Vanny? There she is. That one's got the nice, soft fabric. This one does not, and it sucks. But yeah. Here is a duplicate Glamrock Chica with the actual soft fabric. Yeah. And here is a duplicate Frostbite BB. Uh, this I got on complete accident, but, you know, I, I have it now because Funko didn't want it back. So thanks, guys. I get a free Frostbite BB. And then we got the one, a two, a three, three bon the bonds. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, yeah, that's just for making various Funtime Freddy adjacent customs over the years. I just have these little, these little bonbons. There's probably more. I don't know where they're at. Uh, if I find more, I'll throw them in the pile. They can all go with the Mr. Butters basket. It's like it's meant to be. Next up, we're doing custom plushies. Uh, this is when Funko, you know, they, they're like, you're like, hey, Funko, you should make this character. And they go, mm -mm, nope. And then you go, oh, well, dang, well, screw you then. I'll make it myself. And that's what I did for... A lot of these guys, a lot. So we are gonna start with Withered Freddy. The Withered's probably the most requested FNAF wave ever, and they still haven't made any. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is still my Withered Freddy Funko plush. And honestly, I don't even know if I'm gonna ever replace these guys when they do eventually make the, if they eventually do make the Withered's. Uh, Cause I don't know, they just become iconic at this point. 
I mean, I'm still gonna buy the Withereds if they make them, but I don't know if I'm gonna use them for videos. Here's Withered Bonnie. He's been updated a little bit over the years just to make him look a little bit more appealing. I think his like whole eye was red at one point, but I fixed him up a little bit. These are definitely have it's part of their age. There's a lot of glue stains on them, but kind of hard to notice in videos. And I think that they're the way I designed them makes them charming enough to wear. It's kind of hard to even tell that they're even there. Next up is Withered Chica. <laughs> yeah, she's got hair in her mouth. Ew where that came from um but yeah this one's definitely showing its wear but he, she looks silly and i like that about her she's very derpy here's withered foxy uh, i gave him a hook when i when i made him so you know i'm just saying fuck give me credit uh, these are actually feet from nightmare an old nightmare foxy plush that i don't have anymore but yeah and i think the hair was also from it too but yeah this is guy's pretty neat i like him oh i like him here is the previously mentioned withered golden freddy plush the only remnants of a Funko uh, Golden Freddy in my collection. And I think I actually, I bought this guy from Super Laser Guy. I remember him. He, he's my, <laughs> I, I say that like he's not still my friend. But yeah, he, he, he gave me this one for, for a, a, a small fee. It was, it was pretty good. And then we have the N002. Uh, if you don't know, if you're wondering why his eye looks like this, it's because it was related to the storyline of my OC character Scorch. Which, I guess he might be in this. He might be in here. I, I'll think about it. I'm kidding, I'll show off his plush later, but not now. Here's Shadow Bonnie! Yep, they never made Shadow Bonnie either, so I made Shadow Bonnie. There's been a couple Shadow Bonnies over the years, but this is the newest one and arguably the best one. I don't even think it's arguably, I think it just is the best one. And the other one looks like this, so I take it or leave it, I guess. <laughs> Duh! I found another Bon Bon, guys, let's go! Here's a plush of Purple Guy. I think I used him in Endless Inferno, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Then we have Phantom Mangle back when I planned on making all the phantoms, and then I, then I didn't. <laughs> Fun fact, I'm pretty sure I made this before Phantom BB even existed, so this is technically my second phantom plush. Then we have a Withered Spring Bonnie plush. I've just used this over time for random cinematics and other things, so I plan on using other stuff probably at some point too. I really like this one. Here is a another Spring Bonnie plush. This one is based off of his appearance, or hair, her appearance, whatever, in the Silver Eyes graphic novels, so yeah. The red bow tie and the brown eyes and the big smile. There, there they are. Next up is FNAF 4. You know her, you love her, it's Nightmare Chica! Yeah, bring it up for the crowd. It is the first custom plush I ever made. Um, I did make paper plushies a long time ago, back in the day, where I just made them out of, like, paper, like, paper mache it, kinda. Um, and this was the first one I actually bothered making to a plush. I remember I painted the eyes, I painted the mouth, so all this different stuff I did. And uh, over the years, I've just kind of fixed her up and modified her, and now she is somewhat comparable to my new one. So, you know, she works. She looks good. And then we have Nightmare Fredbear. Uh, this is actually just a normal Freddy plush, but I figure with the details of Nightmare Fredbear, you wouldn't really notice he's the same color as Freddy. Uh, sorry if I just broke that immersion for you, but yeah, I just didn't bother wanting to make a, like a, like a different one. <laughs> Here's a plush of plush trap, literally a plush trap plush. This is also a very old custom, but he actually holds up quite well. I think he does anyway. Here is a bootleg plush of Nightmare. Uh, you can see his eyebrows have been cut off. Uh, I know you say that way Nightmare doesn't have eyebrows. Well, this bootleg plush Nightmare bleh, had uh, this bootleg plush Nightmare had eyebrows, and I cut them off because they looked bad. But other than that, he looks really, really good. If you like, show me this and said, "Hey, look, Funko made Nightmare plush," I would kind of question you. I'd be like, "Wait, wait, they, did they?" And then I'd realize that's probably bootleg because it looks a little weird, but. Still looks really, really good. If you need Nightmare for your collection, might as well pick it up. I think it's on Amazon. So yeah, go buy it. It's cool. If you want to anyway. I don't like when bootleggers make like old characters. Like when they make new characters, it's cool because like they weren't on the market in the first place. Here's a plush of Fred Bear. Uh, just a plush of normal Fred Bear. He's got his like, you know, his light blue eyes and like his normal attire. And he's about the size of a Funko plush. So yeah, I really like this guy. Here's another plush of Crying Child. I believe this, I think the most popular appearance of this guy would have been either my like FNAF 4 in a nutshell video or the collab part I did for Sly Pie. Uh, this guy was in it, so yeah, there he is. Here's a plush of Nightmarian. Uh, this is actually, I think, was a Good Stuff puppet and I made it to a Nightmarian. Doesn't look very good, but I don't know. I've never really bothered going back and trying to make him look better, so eh, there he is. I'm just gonna move him over here because he's so big. Next up is my Sister Location Customs. Uh, this is a very, very old Michael Afton plush. Again, I think one of my first customs. I believe this is used in the Below the Surface music video uh, that I did a long time ago. And yeah, there he is. Speaking of Michael Afton, here's a more updated one. 
Uh, this and two other Michael Afton variant plushies I made were supposed to be used for the um, for a music video on the song It's Not Over by CK9C. Uh, I dropped that project a bit ago, but you know, maybe I'll pick it back up if people really want it. Here's a scooped Michael Afton, also based on Sister Location. I, I, I liked that. I, I gave him like his little wires poking out of his mouth. I thought it looked cool. Here's a plush of Unmasked Ennard. Also thought this guy looked neat. Got a little eyeball in there. Oh, let's just put a little interlude in Sister Location. I forgot. There's Wither Bonnie's face, <laughs> in case anybody wanted that. Here's a plush of Mini Rena. I'm never making Biddy Bap. I think... Oh, dang, that's an actual stain. I wonder how, I wonder how that happens. But anyway, yeah, there's my... There's just a random Mini Rena plush I made a long time ago. Not a super impressive custom. Here's a plush of Handy Unit. Made pretty recently for his uh, other a couple appearances. Here is Yendo, the last Sister Location guy. I finally have the whole Sister Location cast. Because they made Bonnet and Walbit. Never made Yendo, though. I remember people used to say he was going to be Best Buy exclusive. <laughs> that was interesting. Next up are my customs for FNAF 6. Here's another Michael Afton plush, based on his appearance in FNAF 6. I believe this is based on, like, a fan-made model, but I still think it looks pretty cool. You can see his face underneath. It's very ugly, but, you know, he is a zombie man, so didn't really expect it to be pretty. Here's number one crate, also just a really old custom. I'm pretty sure I made this just completely randomly just because I liked number one crate, but yeah. Here's a plush of Ned Bear. Finally to complete that line off, dear lord. I don't know why they never made Ned Bear, it's really aggravating. That actually used to be uh, an old custom of Rockstar Freddy before they came out with the uh, FNAF 6 wave, so yeah, there he is. Here we have Funtime Chica. This plush has been modified heavily over the years, but I'm really satisfied with the way it looks now. It finally, I think, is at a point where I think it looks pretty good. I like this one a lot. It's very cute. It's very reminiscent of Toy Chica. Here's a really bad custom of Funtime Cupcake. It's, it, it, it's there. It exists. Here's a custom of Music Man. I really like this one a lot. This one just holds up super well, I think. And I think Funko should make their plush look like something like this, when they, if they make one. They should. There's a lot of Music Man fans out there, and look how much fan service he got in Security Breach. Like, come on, man. Here is Scrap Baby. I, this is actually my second Scrap Baby. Uh, the first one, I don't even know what happened to it, honestly. But yeah, this is my second Scrap Baby, and I think it looks so much better than the first one. God. I like trying to keep my customs somewhat consistent with Funko quality nowadays, and I think this one does a pretty good job not looking too detailed, but also still looking good. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't look like overly detailed. Speaking of which, here's Molten Freddy that I made adjacent with her. Again, my second Molten Freddy. Thank God my first one looked really bad, but, um... Yeah, here he is. I love that I gave him all the little eyeballs down there. I used a couple different, I think I think this actually uses the body of the old Molten Freddy as well as a bunch of spare entered parts I had lying in a bin. He's got his little octopus legs, it's cool. I liked him, he looked nice. Last but not least for FNAF 6, here's Scrap Trap. Or William Afton, or uh, Salvage, or I don't know what the hell people call him. This one has also been modified a bunch. This is not a new plush, though. This is the same one that I made all those years ago when I made the scraps in that video. So yeah, this is the one that's this is the one that survived. Obviously modified, but still it survived nonetheless. It's really nice being able to have all four scraps. Because Funko didn't do that for some reason. Like guys, I'm not mad that you didn't make the scraps, but like it's not like you made up for it by completing a different set of characters. I had to make Ned Bear myself and these guys, and I haven't even made the rock stars. I don't even know if I'm ever gonna do that. It's been Oh god, it's almost been six years since FNAF 6 came out. I don't like thinking about that. Next up is Help Wanted. First up, we have Glitch Trap, the man of the hour. I still really love this plush a lot. And, I don't know, I've never really seen a Glitch Trap plush that's topped this one, in my opinion. Obviously, everyone has their own artistic taste. I'm not gonna pretend like it. mine's objectively better than everyone else's, but... I don't know, for me, I think this one's perfect. I will say, uh, Swifty Plush Productions comes pretty close, so that one's really good. Then we have my first Dreadbear plush. I made this guy around the time that the game came out, because I wanted to use him for my Halloween special that year. But yeah, he looked kind of dumb, but that was essentially the point. He was supposed to look big and bulky and gross, but yeah, that, that there he is. Chuck him back here. At least want to give, like, the main guys the front row. And I'm really sad I can't find the head, but this is the body to my first Vanny custom, back when we had no idea what she looked like, and I just kind of based it off of the teaser and what I assumed. Yeah, um, I'll probably throw up a picture of what the Vanny plush looked like. I decapitated it for dramatic effect, which I've done twice now with different Vanny customs in the day, but... It, 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 listen, the Vanny costume is, is, is a costume, so that's why it's decapitated, God. It's, 
Because Shrek can hold his, like, dead child. <laughs> I think it's fairly appropriate we move down here for this next one. Here is the Princess Quest Amalgamation Glitch Trap. I don't know if it has an official name. Uh, however, I, I'm really, I really like this guy. I think he looks really cool, and he surfaced some cool lore stuff. And also, I think I kind of, I kind of started, sparked a trend, because a lot of people started to make this guy after I made him. And also, a lot of people said they're inspired by me when they made him. So I'm really happy about that, because I think this is a super cool design, and I'm sad it re really wasn't used more. You can tell the type of fabric I use for most of my customs is very prone to attracting hair. So it's just, it's just, it's just annoying. I don't know what the hell that got there. Also, here's Vanny's mask, the prop I used in that one episode. So um, and I think another Sly Pie collab part, funny enough. So. She's got her head back. All right, now we're on to security breach. And speaking of decapitated vannies, yes, this was my first vanny custom. I also decapitated it for dramatic effect. What do you do? Stop, stop bullying me. But yeah, there's there's decapitated vanny. Again, this was made with the the vanny from the old scratchy fabric, and all the other ones were turned into uh, the shattered animatronics. So. I guess we'll move on to those now. Just kidding though, I wanna cover some of the normal characters first. This is my first uh, custom of Glamrock Freddy before, again, the game came out, we knew what most of the designs looked like. This is based off of the picture from the calendars, I believe. Um, I made this plush. And actually, I think this plush holds up pretty dang well. I think it just looks good. I got a good shape going. He's about Sanchi sized. I actually really like this guy. I think he holds up well. He's never been in a video though, so that's just kinda as good as he's gonna get. Here is uh, Vanessa, the security guard. Appeared many times in the series. Yeah. Her plush body is based off of the, um, I think the old, like, Funko Squish Me guys. They're, like, they got little stubby legs and, like, long arms. And I just thought this plush design was, uh, cute, and it looked good to size them up well with the, uh, normal FNAF plushies. Because, you know, they, he, I think she sizes up pretty well with the rest of them. But, yeah, there is Vanessa. What's up, it's, uh, Gregory, I gotcha. Yeah, here's Gregory. Made him when the game came out. Been in videos. R.I.P. Um, I guess spoilers for the movie. My bad. Uh, but yeah, there's the Faz watch, you know. He's, he's, he's chilling. I like Gregory. He looks very nice. Little guy. Here is Sunrise! And you're probably wondering, why the hell does this look like this? That's not what Sun looks like. Sun looks like that! Well, I actually based this off of the really old posters and all the old trailers where you got the little art of, uh, of the sun. And she's called Sunrise in my videos. And that, it will stay. I'm not, I'm not swapping to those guys. I like those guys, but they're gonna serve their own purpose. I think that the characters are too pre-established to just all of a sudden make them into completely different characters. Besides, that's what different interpretations are for. Why would I ruin the thing I got when it's original to me? Uh, here is the moon. Moon drop. A little closer to the original, but still a little different. I think the body is more inspired off of the drawings as well. But yeah, this is, a. Uh, this is a little closer to how moon the moon actually looks in the game, but still not quite. Here is Music Man! This guy is gigantic. I gave him his big spindly legs and his long neck, his big headphones. This is video, like, I remember when I put him in a video, it, like, blew up. Uh, everyone really liked that one. That's probably just because he's just a really good custom. I think he looks super cool. Definitely people have outdone me. Oh my god, there's some awesome DJ Music Man customs out there that are probably way better than mine. However, I do think this one still holds up pretty well. Next up is the Staff Bot. Uh, he was in the Invade the Fanverse video, or not Invade, the Into the Fanverse video. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is the little, these are the little drones that follow around the Fanverse, like Office, and help the developers, and Scott Coth. Meet the develop. Thanks, Twitter, for liking that video. Here is Eclipse. Uh, this is actually not Eclipse from Ruin. This is Eclipse from the arcade game, Balloon World. Uh, that's what I based his entire design off of as, like, a singular entity. Uh, though, I guess Eclipse now, instead of being, like, a third sun and moon, is more like them combined and harmonized and ruined. Uh, but now, this is his own thing, I guess. And again, I guess since these two are so unique compared to the game, might as well throw another third unique guy in there to complete the trilogy. But yeah, I love this Eclipse. I think he looks super cool. All three of the little guys. Get out of here. Next up is Upgrade Freddy. Uh, this is yeah, obviously at the end of the game when he gets all of the parts. Uh, Monty's claws, Chica's voice box. Uh, I, I think I was intending to make this look like a stitch line to look like they like stitched in the voice box, but now it just kind of looks like a beard. Thankfully, you can't really see it, so you know we're just going to pretend it's not there. Uh, there's the purple bow tie and the yellow eyes. This is the first Glamrock Freddy custom I made that was made with a stupid scratchy, the scratchy one, and now he's Upgrade Freddy. Next up is, I guess I'll just do Freddy again. Here's Shattered Freddy uh, from the Disassemble Vanny ending slash the uh, Princess Quest ending where he gets destroyed by the staff bots. This is what he looks like. And in Ruin, he becomes Ruined to Freddy. So, you know, um, all those people using Shattered Freddy in your thumbnails, you're dumb and I hate you. Just kidding. But yeah, this is Shattered Freddy. He looks neat. 
I will say though, um, don't expect me to make the ruined customs. Like I do have customs line for ruined, but I'm not gonna make the ruined animatronics because they're just not really fitting with my storyline. So I don't really see a point in making them. Uh, I got other stuff planned, guys. Don't worry. But that's besides the point. Here's Shattered Chica from Security Breach, where she got her beak broke off and she lost her voice. And later she gets covered with gross, disgusting moldy cheese. That's, God, I still can't believe that ended up being true. It's so foul. Next up is Shattered Monty. Uh, the eyes could have been better on this guy, but I do like the way I did like the tail with like the, the all the like the wires point, like pointing out of the bottom. But yeah, there's Shattered Monty. No legs, no claws, no nothing. He's just kind of there. Here's Shattered Roxy looking all crazy with her hair and her broken tail and all that stuff. But yeah, I like this one. This one looks good. Uh, here is Glamrock Bonnie. I don't know where his glasses went. This design's obviously outdated because in Ruin they showed off his design and he kind of looks more adjacent to Toy Bonnie than Classic Bonnie or Rockstar or whoever the heck I based this guy off of. But yeah, this is, this is based off a lot of different fan designs that combined into one. Yeah, he does not look like this, however. But I'm not going to replace him because, again, I think this just follows the storyline, so there'd be no sense in replacing him with a new one. However, you know, if anyone else wants to go make their own Glamrock Bonnie, have fun. It's a free country. And if you're not in America, it's a free you. There's definitely other free countries out there. I just, I, I, I can't name them off the top of my head. Also, here's Burn Trap. Yeah, the guy that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Non-canon little guy, because they made Princess Quest canon. So this guy doesn't even exist anymore, technically. But he's still cool. He's in the movie. He was awesome. Awesome fight scene. Him and Springtrap went like, da -da 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 -da, and then they hurt each other. And it was awesome. And I played Metal Gear Rising music in the background, and it went really hard. We have two customs from the newest FNAF game, Security Breach Ruin. Here is Cassie. Um, I updated her appearance to look more like the original game, because for some reason they made her, like, blonde and white in the first teaser, but they, they, she's not that in the game, so I fixed it. And this is how she's obviously going to look in videos from now on, so, yeah, I fixed Cassie. She looks a bit better now, but yeah. And here is the Mimic, who I also updated to look more like his game appearance because I felt it looked more unique. And it also, again, fits with the storyline, so I think it just looks nice to have him look more like his in-game appearance. And yeah, there is the Mimic. So yeah, he's pretty neat. <sighs> I forgot about this guy when doing FNAF 2. Here's Cake Bear. <laughs> yeah, from the cutscene and stuff. Um, you know, he can go down here. All right, next up is FNAF AR, Customs. Next up is Customs from AR. I think I already said that. So one of those cuts we'll get in the video. Starting off with, uh, I'm trying to think of chronological order here. Ah, uh, Shamrock Freddy, right. Yeah, Shamrock Freddy. This is my very first Shamrock Freddy. He's very outdated, but like Dreadbear, I used him for the, the, the holiday special of when he came out in the game. So it was like early 2020. Here's Toxic Springtrap. Uh, I really like the way this one looks. And I got really lucky because they didn't even make Toxic Springtrap. So now I can finally come have the two uh, Toxic Wasteland guys. So yeah, he looks pretty neat. Here is a uh, Black Ice Frost Bear. Looks pretty cool. As well as my old Frostbite BB before they made an actual Frostbite BB. He's this little guy. Uh, and speaking of, here's a Frost Plush Trap, which apparently they're making some kind of Frost Plush Trap merch, according to leaks. Probably gonna be a plush, so this guy's also soon gonna be outdated. And the only one that will stand the test of time, Arctic Ballora. This is my favorite out of the three, so you know, it, it, it worked out. Here is a uh, Heartsick Baby. Yes, Heartsick Baby. Um, here she is. Uh, her bow broke, sadly, but other than that, she's in pretty decent condition. She was in Baby's Heartsick Valentine's video. I liked it. Here's Flaming Springtrap. That was a uh, Heat Miser for like my like. I don't remember what the actual movie's called. <laughs> yeah, like Snow Miser and Heat Miser. They're like they're like a they're like a duo. Put the movie on screen. <laughs> How am I forgetting? The year without a Santa Claus. That one. God dang it. Here's Ringmaster Foxy that was used in the Belor Goes to the Stark Circus videos, along with the other two customs. I want the that. I got the whip. Yeah, he's got the whip. He goes like, eh, eh. yeah, it's cool. Got a whip. Neat. Here's Magician Mangle with the little endo head buddy with the little magician thing. Yeah, she's cool. I like her. She looks nice. She got a very long snoot. Didn't I do it for you? Here's Clown Springtrap. He's bigger than the rest. I think he looks pretty cool. I used an actual clown nose I got from Halloween store on this guy. So yeah, he looks cool. I like him. It was a very good Halloween video. Happy people liked it. Here is a non-scene plush in the actual videos. Here is Curse, or the like Aztec spring trap from that event. You'll have to see how that plays part in the video. And here is Serpent Mangle. Uh, I took some creative liberties with this guy. I made it an actual serpent. Uh, she also has wires in her, so you can bend her. 
and make her like an actual snake. But yeah, this one's super cool. I love the way this one ended up turning out. I got like those, the moon and the sun on her back because she has those in the actual game. So yeah, it's neat. Another interlude to add a very miscellaneous plushie I forgot. Here is a plushie of Mystery Mini Keychain Foxy. Um, just put you like here. I remember I bought one of these packs of Hot Topic one time. I got him and I went, hmm, okay. And then never again. <laughs> Next up is the books, the books. First up, we got Count the Ways Fun Time Freddy. Got an openable chest. His eyebrows can go up and down. I like put like a little, like a little wire in him so you can just kind of like get him to get him to pose. It's pretty neat. Uh, he's pretty good in the music video and in the actual video he was in. So yeah, I liked him. He's neat. Or County, I think was his nickname. Then we have another never before seen custom, the Stitch Wraith. Uh, you'll have to see what role he plays in videos, but yeah, I really like the Stitch Wraith. I think he's very cool. There we go. I almost forgot. This is technically from that story. Millie. It's Millie. She was used in the music video. But yeah, there's Millie from Count the, Count, Count the Ways. Here's Plush Trap Chaser, also from book two. I like this guy, I like his train. I thought that was a pretty cool gimmick for a video, especially because he got ran over at the end of his book. Here's Fetch, also from book two. Keep forgetting how to put him in videos, I'm not even gonna lie. A lot of the nightmare videos I've recorded and just filmed since I introduced him, I forget to put him in, but he's still there in canon. I just forget sometimes, guys. Get me some slack. The Nightmares crew is so big now, it's hard to put them all in one video. <laughs> also from book three, Lonely Freddy! Look at you, look at this little guy, or book two, I mean. Lonely Freddy, so yeah, all three from book two. I can't believe I forgot you, Eleanor. I she's so con she's so like integral to the to the epilogues. I almost forgot she's technically from book one. Yes, here is Eleanor. Um, this design is very much uh, inspired, if not directly taken from the Oof Troops design. Uh, they designed Eleanor for their like I think it's called Undeniably Canon FNAF Timeline series. The series is very funny though. Go watch it. And I made a little plushie off of them. So yeah, I really like, I really love this design. And normal Eleanor looks dumb because she doesn't look like that in the book description, but whoever drew her screwed it up. So this design looks better. It looks more unique because Eleanor's not baby. She's like a whole new character. It's, let me tangent about FNAF. Here is Blackbird. That's pretty much it, yeah. I used like a bird skeleton when I made this guy. He's pretty neat. <laughs> you can see the bird skeleton a little bit when you lift up his like feathers. But yeah, I thought it was pretty cool to leave the, the bird feet down there because it just looks creepier. <laughs> there. Ah! Here's Hide and Seek Shadow Bonnie, or XOR as I call him in the series. <laughs> I just kind of thought of a random anagram of three letters and I completely forgot that XOR is the name of uh, Dee Dee and the Shadow Dee Dee in Ultimate Custom Night, so lol. Here is the Faz Goo that I made for the Smart Bonnie episode. Pretty neat. Here is the friendly face uh, Bonnie. It's based off of that story, or Bon Bon, I guess, but technically. So I guess this counts as a Bon Bon. They might be a little scared to have him in there. Here's Coils the Circus Clown. Uh, backstory for Ennard in my videos. Because even though he technically is not Ennard, I'm really sad because that was a really popular fan theory and it was cool. And then Scott Cawthon went and released the ultimate guide and then he looked nothing like Ennard and I got really sad. Whatever, screw you, Mr. Cawthorn. I'm making my own story. And last but not least, for specifically Fazbear Frights, we have three of the Sea Bonnies. The best FNAF characters. This is a Daco Sea Bonnie song. Here's a couple characters from Tales from the Pizza Plex, which I guess we already had Mimic, who's also in there, but shut up. Here are the Bobby Dots that will be used in the upcoming episode. Gemini, Olive, and Rose. Yeah, um, the Bobby Dots have just become a meme among my friend group, or at least they were at a point, so I just thought making an episode off of them would be funny. Like, what the hell is a Bobby Dot? And here is Tiger Rock. He looks pretty cool. I gave him like his bell bottoms, and I think he just looks really good. This custom came out pretty nice. So yeah, there's Tiger Rock. Next up, we're doing fan game slash the fan verse. I found two more bonbons, let's go! Yes! There's so many! The bonbons are plentiful, yeah! Starting off with Five Nights at Candy's, here is Cindy the Cat, to go along with Candy up there. Her brother. Yeah. Chester the Chimp. Also really cool. Here is Blank the Human, drawing, canvas. I don't really know. Here is Penguin. No need to elaborate further. Yeah, but I did give him like little like, uh, what do you call it, like wires in his arms to make him, his, 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 his arms go up and down and they stand still. And he's very cute and small and I like him a lot. Yeah. 
And lastly, in the Candies lineup, we have Monster Rat from Five Nights at Candies 3. I'm not gonna elaborate on the lore relevancy here. Here's a little fun fact for this part of the video. The seventh episode of FNAF Plush, that's right, all the way back in season one, was actually going to be a Five Nights at Candies episode. Uh, I made paper plushies for all these guys and started an episode where him and, you know, the Candies crew and the Freddy's crew had a little restaurant war. However, after filming the episode, I just didn't feel it was up to standards and I thought the idea didn't really land super well. So I scrapped it and threw all the plushies away. However, I think that was a good thing because now we got the fanverse arc going on and people really seem to like it. So, yeah, who knew that, like, seven years later it would make a big impact. Wait, 2016. Damn, it is seven years later. I just, I thought I was, I was rounding up high. Oh God. All right, let's keep going before I have an existential crisis about how time is an unstoppable force. Here's Stone the Crow from Pop Goes. Based on obviously his evergreen design. I'm sorry, Penguin. I'm gonna give you a little more time in the front, buddy. Here is Sarah the Squirrel, the yellow one, also based off the evergreen design. Here is Saffron the Squirrel. I loved the little lanyard I gave her with uh, the little music. I think that's a uh, G Clift. I'm gonna feel real dumb in editing if I'm wrong. Here is Menorah the Mouse. Very cute. I was very happy with how this turned out. You got the little, little, little like bandana in the back with the bow. And the little orange skirt. Yeah, little, little silly little gal. There she is. And lastly, we have Simon from Pop Goes 2016 slash Evergreen. This is based off of 20. I think it's actually based off of his design from Pop Goes 2, specifically. Or reprinted. There's been a lot of cancelled Pop Ghost projects, and that's technically not even known if he's gonna show up in Evergreen or not, but fact check on me that me in the future when I'm editing this. Next up is some plushies from the Joy of Creation. Here is Ignited Freddy. These are based mostly off of the designs from the Reignited collection, as opposed to the one from base game, but I guess when translated to plushies, it wouldn't really be that easy to tell. Here's Ignited Bonnie. So, fun fact, uh, the reference I was using for Ignited Bonnie had his torso flipped, so his arms are backwards, but whatever! Here's Ignited Chica. I really like the way this one turned out. Look like the way her mouth looks. It's just super, like, gapy and cool looking, and I, I really like it. And here's Ignited Foxy. This one is technically based off of uh, the old Ignited Foxy design, because uh, we have not seen what his new design looks like yet, so, yeah. Yeah. Cool. And lastly, here is Creation, a huge behemoth. I actually made this custom a super long time ago. If you remember, he was actually in the Travis Plush Productions movie too, as Anti-Travis's final form for some of you OC likers out there, my OC series. Um, but yeah, and I used him for that, and now he's gonna be used for fanverse stuff, potentially, probably. Yes, I don't know why else I would have updated him otherwise if he wasn't gonna be used for that. But yeah, he's really big. And also, lastly, I guess this is, this plush is obviously, like, an OC character, like, this is just Springtrap, like, but withered, but this is technically based off of Ignited Springtrap, uh, this was an Ignited Springtrap plush before, I just changed him into being, like, a burned withered Springtrap that was in the Fanverse series, he has his classic watch and the prisoner jumpsuit that he was in in the videos, so yeah. Alright, so this is very topical, um, FNAF Plus! If you're in tune with FNAF drama, boy, do I have some news for you. We're not gonna comment on that, however, because these characters are still gonna be used in the videos, because I've gone too far with writing the story to take them out. Here is FNAF Plus Freddy. I like his big jaw, he looks like a Chad, he's pretty cool. Here is FNAF Plus Bonnie. Uh, his teeth ended up a lot more janky than I wanted them to, but irregardless, I actually like this guy. His holy eyes give him some pretty, pretty, pretty dare staring looks. He's really pretty spooky. Here's FNAF Plus Chica, along with the little cupcake that can attach to her hand. Uh, obviously her bib is not the let's eat. However, this was a combination of one, me wanting to make her more unique from the other Chicas, so I gave her the plus logo there, and I was also way too lazy when making this one to make, to actually add the let's eat text, because god, that would have taken eons. And all the pupils were from these guys when I made them, however, yeah, I needed the bib for being that Chica, I couldn't just not have that. Here is FNAF Plus Foxy, much lankier than the other ones. Yeah, that's all the FNAF Plus guys. There's a couple miscellaneous ones. Here is Flumpty uh, from One Night at Flumpty's. This is actually a bootleg that I bought online. Uh, yeah, 
wasn't super expensive, so I figured why not, might as well. I still can't believe there is a bootleg Flumpty plush out there, but yeah, you will, you will appear in videos. And here is uh, the Paul Bear from Juniors. I used it in the music video. Go watch that, by the way. That didn't get very many views, and it made me a little sad. All right, so this technically counts as fanverse stuff. So here is the fanverse to meet the... Okay, I'm not going to quote that again. Here's the fanverse devs from uh, the fanverse episodes. First up is Scott Cawthon with his cape that I gave him. Why does he have a cape? Because capes look cool, all right? Here's Kane Carter. Uh, he has a new, like, Persona character. I think he uses on Twitter, but whatever. This looks fine. <laughs> I think he looks funny anyway. Here's Emil Mako. I mean, his red pants. <laughs> Here he is. Here is Nixon. I think this is easily the best plush out of the four that I made. Just the most detailed and looks the nicest. Again, this is oddly topical. Anyways, here's Fiznom. Yep. Here's a couple hoax Five Nights at Freddy's characters. Here's Sparky the dog. I'm happy everyone really liked that episode. That one was, uh, I, I, had, a, I had a fascination with gaslight humor, and I just thought that it would be funny to turn that into an entire video. <laughs> Here is a plush of Golden Toy Freddy, which was in the newest video. Uh, not even as a time of the recording, so it, will just, it will just have been the newest video. Here's some plushes and some characters based uh, off the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, which will also feature them in a Five Nights at Freddy's plush movie video. Uh, here is Mike Schmidt, played by Josh Hutcherson. Here is Abby, played by Piper Rubio. Here is Steve Raglan, and slash spoiler alert, William Afton, played by Matthew Lillard. William Afton! It's William Afton! Here's a couple miscellaneous plushies. Uh, first up is Circus Chica. Uh, I wanted her to complete the set for the video that I'm gonna use the Balloon Circus characters in eventually. Well, I say eventually, like I haven't already recorded it, but I'm keeping it backlogged, so that video will be out at some point. But yeah, here's Circus Chica based on all the merch of her. Yeah. Here is Scorch, my OC character slash not OC character based off of the amalgamation from the fourth closet. I guess I could have put this with the book characters, but whatever, I saved them till now. There is Scorch. That is actually the second version of Scorch. The first version was used for Ghost Scorch, which I'm not gonna put here because that's technically not directly based off of a Fighters Freddy's character. That is something I made up entirely. Here's the Night Guard plush. Uh, I used him as Fritz Smith in the videos. He was just a stand-in Night Guard for Juniors, and he will be a stand-in Night Guard for any vid future videos that need a Night Guard. Likewise, here's the Ghost Girl plush, which will be used for whenever I need a Ghost Girl. Uh, here's a fun fact. These two plushies are actually, uh, piggy plushies. I found on clearance at GameStop and decided, hey, I'll buy these and make them into characters. So I made them into the Night Guard and the, uh, Ghost Girl. So yeah. There they are. I moved them back there. Next up are a couple characters, uh, that are not Five Nights at Freddy's characters. However, they are Five Nights at Freddy's adjacent based on theme thematic, uh, appropriation and... I don't know, they just were in that one video where they all beat up Freddy. Here is... I actually forgot his name. He's the guy from Banana Splits. Editing me. Tell me who it is. Here is Willy from Willy's Wonderland. Yeah. Nick Cage beat up a bunch of robots in that movie. Here's Bond from The Walton Files. But yeah, there's all three little guys. They beat up Freddy, and then he beat them up in return, because status quo. Here's a couple Scott Cawthon characters that he created. Here is Soul Dozer, uh, I guess featured in FNAF World Update 2, and also the Desolate Hope. I think that was the Desolate Hope character? I'm pretty sure he was, but yeah, there's Soul Dozer. Here's the Coffee Pot, also from FNAF World Update 2 and the Desolate Hope, likewise. I like this one a lot. She's a little silly. Is it a she? Eyelashes and gender norms, so I assume it's a she. I have no idea. Here's Chipper, an actual Chipper plush. And from Chipper and Sons, Lumber Company, and also just from FNAF World. I was in FNAF World. I actually don't remember the name of this character, but this is another Scott Cawthon character that was made in, I think, an old, old RPG game he made. Uh, but yeah, these all were going to be featured. Uh, actually, this is these are, these guys were all for a fan idea uh, that was uh, for, hey, you should do an episode where, in the flip side, where all these characters meet the, the gang and they have to do, like, a plot for it. And I initially had that idea. I was like, that's a good idea. And I was originally going to do it, and I made all these plushies for it. However, uh, later on, I decided to scrap the idea for the time being, and later, that turned into the fanverse saga. So, thanks, random commenter I can't remember the name of. Um, thank you. I'm pretty sure I hearted your comment. If not, I'll find it and give you credit for coming up with what was eventually an idea that people really liked. So thank you, man. That was that was cool. But yeah, I may eventually use these guys in the fanverse series somehow for like a cutaway gag or some other bit. 
But that's it, guys. That's all my FNAF plushies. However, we are not done. Good God, this is a lot. Um, we are not done. We still have to get through the mystery minis, the McFarland sets, the action figures, and the Funko Pops. So, let's do it. How could I forget? How could I forget? I sat you aside and that made me forget you. Here's my plush of the Afton Amalgamation that was featured in the FNAF plush movie. I made a big deal out of it in the last plush collection. And I'm going to make a big deal out of it again. This is my best custom ever and it's so cool. It's like three feet tall and it's awesome. Big kaiju that we had to fight all the guys. Where do I put him? Oh, mech space. It's a little squished, but dare. Now he's watching over the rest of the collection. They're all terrified of him. All right, now we're doing action figures. All right, so next up is the action figures. Here is Bonnie. This is actually the re-release of Wave 1 Bonnie that I bought very recently. Uh, there's his guitar. Okay, guys, I hate to admit it, but a lot of my FNAF action figures, especially the older ones, didn't really stand the test of time. So a lot of these are just kind of spare parts. So uh, let's, let's just try and just guess. Here's the remains of what I assume is Golden Freddy. Ooh, a foxy leg. Spring trap pieces. Chica hand. Hey, look, the cupcake survived. Most of Funtime Freddy? And Bon Bon. A little Ballora. A Funtime Foxy piece or two. Ennard! Dreadbear fell behind my bed while I was making the video, and I, I, I can't, I can't dig him out. There's so much crap under my bed. But yes, I have the whole Dreadbear figure. This is just the only pieces I can retrieve. Sorry, bud. Well, that's been, uh, FNAF figure pieces. I did have a complete Lulbit figure, however, I traded that away for some other FNAF merch, uh, to Froki. Uh, so my next chronological FNAF figure is Lefty. <laughs> Let's just say we jumped a couple waves. There is Lefty. Oh my god, I forgot I have Circus Baby. Mostly, that's a Ballora leg on the left, but it, it's close enough. Here is Glitch Trap. Easily, easily the best FNAF figure. My god, he's so awesome. Literally, my only problem with him is his joints, but, I mean, you could have painted him yellow, but other than that, it, it, it's easily the best FNAF figure. This guy's awesome. I love posing him. You can make him do the thing, the pose he does in the game. Can you tell I'm not really that big a fan of the FNAF action figures? Here's Captain Fox. He one I actually like quite a bit. Yeah, I like him. He's cool. Good, good figure. Here's Vanny. Uh, the knife I actually use on the Funko Snap now, so uh, I don't actually have Vanny with her knife. I do have the knife, just not with her. I like to give this Vanny a Glock. I didn't buy this figure because I thought it looked good. I bought it because it was funny. God, they they just they just they just messed up so bad on the security breach wave. It's so awful. Here is a uh, Chocolate Bonnie. I definitely should have done Frostbear first. Here's Freddy Frostbear. I like Frostbear. I think he's really good. He's, he's very cool. I like his how how like clear he is and looks neat. His head is very wobbly though for me. Um, here's Chocolate Bonnie. He looks pretty decent. I don't know why I bought these. Here's more of Funko's lies where they said these were FNAF AR characters when they're not ever even in the game. They didn't even bother giving Chica a cupcake. This is bull crap. Here's Shamrock Freddy. Um, other than the fact that he looks like he's covered in poo, uh, I like him. He looks good. They just really dropped the ball with the dirt texture on that one. Here's VR Toy Freddy. I was happy to finally get some action figures of the toys. And these are definitely better than the plushies. Here's VR Toy Bonnie. <laughs> System VR Toy Bonnie. Their names are stupid, I don't care. Here is uh, High Score Toy Chica, along with her uh, little 8-bit cupcake. Good prop. Let's see if I can get her to hold it properly. Here's Radioactive Foxy. Apparently there's actually an endoskeleton figure in here, so maybe I'll buy another radioactive foxy and try building an endoskeleton one day. I'll be stealing your shins. <laughs> Here's Livewire Toy Freddy. I don't remember if he came with a mic or not, because I can't find it. Here's Toxic Springtrap. Yeah, he glows green, I think. I think all these guys are glow in the dark, from what I remember. Here's Liberty Chica, an absolute must-buy. 10 out of 10 FNAF figure. It actually bothers standing on the carpet. If you have FNAF figures and don't have this one, you're a chump! Anyways, here's Arctic Ballora. It's actually a really nice FNAF figure, and probably one of the best ones they made in a really long time. Well, okay, besides Glitch Trap, I forgot that th that was more recent than I thought it was. And here's Circus Chica, because she's just so silly, and it's to fill the empty hole in my heart, because... God, <laughs> Claire Rock Chica, why does her action figure look so shit? Hey, this is me, uh, multiple days after filming the video, uh, I just realized, I forgot this, um, I have a tie-dye spring trap figure, and it hangs on my wall, cheese trap, it hangs on my wall, um, just wanted to let everybody know, but yeah, that, that, that counts. So yeah, that was the roller coaster of emotions that's in the FNAF action figure. Let's do the mystery minis now, I actually like these things. Alright, here is... All of my FNAF mystery minis. 
Oh, you want me to actually count them out? Uh, going in order here might be the actual most painful thing ever, but I'll do it for you guys. Here's Freddy Fazbear from Wave 1 of the Mystery Minis, back when they still turn their heads. I don't know why they don't do that anymore. Yeah, there's, there's Freddy. Here's Bonnie the Bunny. I don't know, why is his head a completely different color from his body? That's weird. Is that just like age? I bought these ones secondhand. I didn't actually originally buy Wave 1. I got them secondhand from a friend through trades. It's weird. Here is Chica. Also weirdly, it's not as noticeable on her, but you can kind of tell it's like a shade darker. It's so bizarre. I like her feather hands. I think that's cute. Here's the cupcake from Wave 1. Toy cupcake, basically. Here is Foxy. Little guy. Here's Golden Freddy. Actually, I think this mystery mini holds up really well. I love the wash on the eyes. It looks super good. Here is Toy Freddy. Black eyes and all, and he's sitting down. I actually don't think they did any sitting down mystery minis past wave one. Actually, no, I think there was some in wave two, but after wave two, they definitely stopped. Here is Toy Bonnie. Pretty good one. Nothing really wrong with that. I like the tail. Wait to see. Yeah! Sorry, I forgot. Here's uh, Toy Chica. This is actually, fun fact, one of the original mystery minis I got all the way back when, like, I bought wave one myself. Uh, this was one of the few I got. This is the Walmart exclusive beaked one. I don't have the beakless one. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Here's another one of those original ones, the puppet. This is a good one. I like this one a lot. And I'll finish off the trifecta of the ones I actually bought myself back when Wave 1 came out. The Endo one. All these other ones I got secondhand, at least from Wave 1 anyway. And here we have the elusive Shadow Freddy, the GOAT! I did a trade with Froki, uh, I think around like eight months ago, something like that. I, I don't remember how long ago it was, but uh, I traded him a my Lulbit action figure, my Stanley Mystery Mini, for um, for, for this guy and for Wither Bonnie Mystery Mini. So, you know, I, I, I think I got a good deal, personally. If you want to know why I discarded that Stanley Mystery Mini, go back to the timestamp where I ranted about the plush. I didn't get the Ella one, so there was no point in having him. Anyways, here's Springtrap. Pretty good. They almost made him Cheeto Orange, so thank God they didn't do that. There's all my Wave 1 guys. Actually, my Wave 2 collection is less than my Wave 1 collection, but I also didn't really buy a whole lot of these back in the day, so yeah. Here is Nightmare Freddy from Wave 2. I love this guy, especially because they bothered giving him the little freddles. You only have two? I think he only has two. Still neat, though. And you can tell he's been on my shelf for a while. Let's get some dust on him. <laughs> Here's Nightmare Bonnie. Also a really good mystery me. The mystery me are just very solid in general. I love these little guys. I think they're awesome. Here's Nightmare Chica. And oh my god, look how much detail they got on the cupcake. Like, god, the FNAF action figures could never. These things are awesome. I think they're easily my... Well, okay, I, yeah, I know. I'm, the, I'm literally the plush producer, but these are my favorite pieces of FNAF merch. I think they're awesome. Here's Nightmare Foxy. Definitely not as menacing as he normally is in the game, but... He's cute, and I think that makes up for it. Here is Nightmare BB. I got him pretty easily. And Nightmare Cupcake. Very happy I managed to pull him. I think I pulled him in this next in this next Mystery Mini of the same day. It was awesome. Because uh, if I didn't have this guy, I don't think I ever would have made the Dark Arrival. So, you know, that was a pretty good turning point for my channel where I actually bothered to start editing my videos. Here's the Fredbear plush. Look at this little guy. He's so cute. I love this Mystery Mini. This guy's GameStop exclusive. He's awesome. I love him. I don't know if I mentioned if Shadow Freddy was Hot Topic exclusive or not, but he was. Here is Circus Baby, another one I got secondhand more recently. Here's Ballora. This is actually one I managed to get back when Wave 2 came out. As well as Funtime Freddy. Yeah, okay. And Bon Bon. Very good, very good Mr. Manny. I like, I like all the gang. I don't have Funtime Foxy, sadly, but I do have Funtime Freddy if he goes, ah! Yeah, here's Jump Scare Funtime Freddy. Uh, actually... <laughs> I keep bringing up Froki trades. Uh, I did, I did a original trade with Froki. I gave him uh, my second dupe of this guy, and I got the Lulbit Pop in return, which you will see later in this video. Also, here's Ennard. And I, okay, this is the thing though. This has the discoloration thing that the, that the Bonnie has, because like this mask definitely used to be way more white. For some reason, it's just, it's just like faded. I don't know why. Can someone exp that like is a better scientist than me explain how that works? Is it like just like, is it just like age? I don't know. Because the other fun times didn't do that. They're still pretty pristine white, but Ennard's like a weird cream color now. It's, it's weird. How could I forget? The elusive, uh, Best Buy exclusive, Nightmare JJ Mystery Mini. I got a dupe one back in the day, and I was like, I want to make a custom mystery mini. And I made this one. I actually think it turned out okay for me being like 12 when I made it. I was probably more like 13, but give or take. <laughs> I forgot him again. How did I do that? I just, I talked about him five minutes ago. You can tell him Here's Wither Bonnie, GameStop exclusive, awesome. The only with like one of the, the two two Withered's merch we've ever got, which is this and the Funko Pop, and I don't have the Funko Pop, but I got this guy now, so thanks for it. Next up is the Twisted Ones. This is where I actually kind of bother to start collecting them. Uh, I think I have the entire base set, thankfully, so that's cool. 
No, I'm missing Bon Bon, but that's still most of them. Here's Twisted Freddy. I actually think these Mystery Maze look really good, especially because they decided to actually give more like fan service for the books by including characters like the Springlock, Daphne, and all that. They actually completing the trio of the toys. One thing I liked about the um, Twisted ones, or just the Mystery Maze in general, is that they actually bothered going back and completing some of the old sets, such as uh, a different character that I'm not going to mention right now. Started talking about. Here's Twisted Pony, completely unrelated. I'm so tired. But yeah, this guy's cool. I like how the jaw is a disconnected piece. <laughs> Twisted Chica. Again, just when the mystery minis do it, it's so much better when the plushies do it. Just, the, the detailing and the actual like second cupcake being down there, it looks nice. Twisted Foxy, bothered putting him in the dirt. The Funko Pop did it too, thank God, but the actual plush looks really are. Here's Twisted Wolf. I'm telling you, with the, the glitch makes it look so much better. Like, why didn't they do that on the plushie? And Theodore. We're all the Twisted One specific characters. Here is uh, the magician and Little Joe. The god, Little Joe. Both of these are sister location characters that appear in the prior room. I, don't th I think it's neat that they're, 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 they're still doing that. Here's Yendo. This was the character I was going to mention. They bothered going back and finishing sister location by adding Yendo, Lulbit, and Bonnet. All three of them in the mystery mini wave. This is what you're supposed to do, Funko. I don't know who's designing your mystery minis, but give them a raise! I mean, I guess they're making this shit now, so like, maybe don't actually. I wouldn't be surprised if he fired the guy that made these. Anyway, here's Dark Spring Trap. I like him. He's 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 a character, I guess. And this is the only Dark Spring Trap merch I own, so you know he's he's cool. Here's Jump Scare Entered. I actually really like this guy. He looks super cool. And the fact that they actually technically have an unmasked Entered Mystery Mini is neat. I know one of my friends had two Entered and two Jump Scare Entered and made an unmasked Entered Mystery Mini out of the two of them by combining them, and it looks really neat. So yeah, that's that's cool. I don't have two of each, so I'm not gonna do that. Here is Afton, the one in 72. I love this guy a lot. I use him as a stand-in for Scrap Trap at my display because they never made a Scrap Trap Mystery Mini. God dang it, Funko! Yeah, I was just complimenting you, man. Anyway, here's the one exclusive I got, is the Lulbit one. Well, I had the Hot Top, I had the Hot Top exclusive Stanley. However, I traded that away for this and that. Or that, so, you know. Anyways, uh, yeah, but I got a bit still, so yeah, this is, this is a pretty good one to still have. I like that they put in the TV, along with the Funko Pop that did it, which I will again show later in the video. I am rambling, I am rambling. I gotta get all my Pizza Sim, guys. I don't even have any half that many of the Pizza Sim ones. God dang it. Next up is Pizza Sim. Uh, I also didn't really get a whole lot of them from this wave, but I did get a couple. Uh, here's Rockstar Freddy. Pretty decent. Ah, uh, Mystery Mini. But, uh, yeah, there he is. Here's Rockstar Bonnie. I like his waving position. I think it's a good it's a good pose for to put him in. Looks cool. Here's Rockstar Foxy. Doesn't really look like Rockstar Foxy. It kind of just looks like normal Foxy holding an accordion. This is probably like the worst mystery in many. It, it just doesn't. What the hell are those pants? I didn't give him the bird, bro. What the hell? Here is Happy Frog. Yeah. Pretty neat one. Here's Orville Elephant. I like this one a lot too. This one's very cute. I like that they made the Orville merch cute. Here's Funtime Chica. With a little cupcake. And L Chip. Good guy. They didn't make Music Man! Where's the Music Man? And here's Lefty. The rarest one that I have from the set. Okay, the common set. I think these next three are pretty rare. Here's Scrap Baby from GameStop. This was actually pretty easy to get. I'm pretty sure that both the scraps were 1 and 12s in their boxes. They, you bought a case and you had them pretty much. But if, especially if you knew the trick like I did, uh, you didn't have to buy the whole case. So, yeah. And here's Molten Freddy. These guys are awesome. Easily some of the best mystery minis. I love these guys so much. Look, and all the scraps ended up together. Look at that, guys. Well, kind of. We'll, we'll say he's, he will say he's scrap trap. And last but not least, the most I've ever spent on a mystery mini, if you don't count trades, <laughs> Egg Baby. Come on, if you know me, you know I needed this guy. Like, I needed him. I, I, I mean, I, I act like I spent like $400 on this guy. I spent like 50 bucks. It's still a lot for like a little teeny two-inch toy, but this is the only official Egg Baby merch. We almost had that good stuff plushie, but we didn't. So here he- wait. Oh no. Oh no. You forgot me in the plushie part of the video! Oh, Jesus Christ, Egg Baby. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, man. I tried you. You. I can't believe you do that to me. I'm like the best one you've ever made. Like, and bought, combined. I can't believe you'd forget me like that. I'm gonna hit you over the head with this box. Wait, no, stop. Ow, god damn it. Okay, okay, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> oh, now I just kind of feel bad. Okay, fine, whatever. Just stop. Just give me, put me in a good spot, please. Anyways, here's my Egg Baby plush. Um, yeah, he's 
He's kind of become infamous. Um, you know what, Egg Baby? I will put you over there. I'm just kidding, you can go here with the FNAF 6 custom. Okay, that was a bit of a detour. Uh, security breach, I think, was the next Mystery Minis right. Here's the Glamrock Freddy Mystery Mini. I think the security breach ones are the only ones they actually bother to do right. This is like the only security breach thing that they made that was decent. Thank God, we have something. The Mystery Mini saved it. Here's Glamrock Chica. I think all these managed to actually stay pretty consistent to the real designs considering the fact that one, they bothered to detail them more, and two, uh, they're tiny and stylized anyway, so they don't really distract that often that much. Here's Monty. Some of the colors are off. There's definitely some things off, like Roxy doesn't have her face paint, but, you know, it's good enough. They're, they're good enough for what they are, for being these little toys. And Vanny, with a knife! Even though she's not allowed to have a knife anymore and has to have a fucking pizza cutter. And also, uh, here's the Blacklight, Chica, and Roxy. I, I just kind of got them randomly. They're there. Guys, wait, this is a kids' channel, no! I lied, this is a PG-13 channel according to Coppa Laws. Is that still a thing? Do people actually still care about that? Here is the, uh, AR wave. Here is the VR Toy Freddy Mystery Mini. This guy's very glossy. Though this was, this started the cursed trend. They don't turn their heads anymore. It's like, that was the one thing that, like, they could do, man. Why'd you take that away from them? Here's System Era Toy Bonnie. Also a pretty decent one. I like that they bothered using the old sculpts. Here's High Score Toy Chica. I love the little 8-bit cupcake. And again, very glossy. I like the glossy. Here's Radioactive Foxy. This one stinks! This looks so bad. What the hell? It's like using like, the fun type Foxy mold and they colored the pupil in. Just, God, this one sucks! On the contrary, here's the spr Toxic Springtrap pl uh, plush mystery mini. I actually like this one a lot. They actually bothered to do his eyes right for once. They actually have like the, the weird ring things. And it looks really cool. The bubbles and boils just... A lot of good detailing on this guy. Here is the 8-bit baby one. I like this one a lot, too. I love that they kept this consistent with the style. And they actually have the whole arcade guys. All the, the whole four of the gang. Here's also Live Wire Toy Freddy. This is the first mystery mini set I actually managed to complete. And I'm very proud of myself for that one. As well as a uh, Heartsick Baby. Their bow and arrow. All in tow. Yeah. Black Heart Bonnie. Another really good looking one. I like the crack at the bottom. You can't really... There's no heart on him. I don't know if... That, that's, that's, that's intentional, right? I do like all the different cracks, though. They've managed to do that pretty well. He's neat. Here's Frost by BB. Again, pretty good mini. I like the cloudy look. I know some people were kind of mad he didn't look like a snow. He more like an ice, but whatever. Arctic Ballora. Very detailed mini. Another one in 72. Pretty rare. I like her a lot. She's very nice. And I la say the best one is Wave for last but not least. Mango! Thank God they gave us a real piece of Mango Emerge instead of just like broken fun time Foxy. I hate you. Actually, where the hell is it? Yeah. Good mystery mini. Actually... I, no, I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna do this for dramatic effect and then we'll get back down here. All right, last mystery mini wave, the Balloon Circus, guys. Here we go. We got Balloon Freddy. Balloon Freddy. He's Balloon Freddy. He's got a balloon. He's cool. There's Balloon Foxy. Again, mischievous. I think this is probably my least favorite mystery mini wave, mostly because these aren't real characters, but I mean, they're, they're still fine. I like the clown designs enough. But the balloon ones are kind of just filler. Here's Balloon Chica! Ah, oh, look at her. It brings me right back to smiling with her little freckle. She's so cute. And Balloon Bonnie's adorable with his stupid smile and his big tooth. And here's another Balloon Bonnie. Oh, right! This is the glow-in-the-dark one! Don't make me show you. It doesn't even show up on camera, god dang it. God, whatever, you de glow, just trust me. Funny story about that one. I got that from a from a from a Walmart somehow. Trust me, Walmart has been very weird. I'm gonna describe another story later when I get to my duplicates. Anyways, yeah, um yeah, I don't know how that happened, but I got it. Here's Clown Freddy. Super nice, super cool. I like his pose. He looks like him. I don't know, he looks like he's doing a Mario pose. You know that one pose Mario does is that one. Here is a uh, Clown Bonnie. I like him a lot. There's little bells. He's very cute. Looks nice. Oh, it's Circus Chica. I called the other ones clowns. I don't care. This is Circus Chica. She's so awesome. Look at her. She's so cute. I love this one. This one glows too. Just please trust me. Here's Clown Foxy. He's sad. He goes boo-womp. He's very sad. I like this one a lot. And last but not least, here is Cheeto Balloon Foxy. That's my nickname for him. The prophecy is true. There's my complete mystery mini collection. All of the unique ones. Keyword being unique. Yeah, I've got all these duplicates, so I guess I'll just, you know, I'll go through them in a time lapse fashion. Yarny Ravis, y'all's gonna be so fast. Frostbite Baby, uh, Mangle, Yendo, Balloon Chica, Type Baby, 
Sister America Bunny, Twisted Freddy, Clamor Chica, 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 uh, oh, this is a cool story. I can slow the video down. So, uh, when I got my, uh, Heartsick Baby and Arctic Galore, I got them in the same case. I pulled, uh, the four rare boxes from two separate cases. Somehow, I actually managed to get two Arctic Galores and two Heartsick Babies. I don't know how those odds work. However, the second Heartsick Baby was also a defect, so I think that kind of seems that something's wrong. Uh, if you can tell, her mi middle faceplates aren't painted and her eyebrows aren't painted, so, yeah, that might be worth something. I have no freaking idea. And if you didn't notice a very specific character missing, because I have like 16 radioactive foxies, I hate the AR wave. I went through tooth and nail to complete the set, but I did it. <laughs> Are you happy now? I did it. I forgot I keep like Cuphead and like miscellaneous mystery minis in these cases also. Speaking of the cases, hey look, I got two of the boxes. From buying the AR set, I got two cases, one with a box topper, one without, and I also have a complete uh, security breach case with the box topper, and I have a balloon circus case without the box topper, so yeah. That'll go over there, I guess. I think keeping the pile of dudes here would be really funny, so I'm gonna do that. Here is the vinyl figures, because there's also YouTubes in here, so I can't just call them Funko Pops. Time for that part of the video. There are probably a Funko Pop collector that is just like, like actually, like this is like nails on chalkboard for them. I don't care about your vinyl figures. I like them because they look cool. I don't care if they're worth $200,000. Anyways, here's Freddy Fazbear. So yeah, I actually don't have the boxes to a lot of these older ones. I do have some of them, but they're in the closet. And screw you, I'm not getting the boxes out. I don't care about Funko Pops that much. They're just cool looking, I don't know. I think the solid black pupils look good for the FNAF figures because they're FNAF and they're scary-ish, kind of, I don't know. Here's Bonnie. I like they got the purple color right. Here's Chica. Their head's turn. Yeah, and they're, they're just Funko Pops. I don't, I don't know. Most of the ones I buy nowadays are just because I feel like it, not even because I want them really all that bad. Okay, I don't collect them. I just buy them because I think they look cool. Here's Foxy. I collected them in the old days, though. That 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 was definitely the truth at some point. Here's Springtrap. And fun fact, this is actually the glow-in-the-dark Springtrap, not the uh, not the normal one. I'm not gonna... Ch you just trust me, goddammit. Here's Shadow Freddy. This one was exclusive to Hot Topic. Actually, I guess I should mention that Springtrap was exclusive to GameStop. This one was exclusive to Hot Topic. Because all the Shadow Freddy stuff was exclusive to Hot Topic, and he was so awesome. Here is the Toy Freddy Pop. It was exclusive to GameStop. I actually really like this one. I think it's one of the best. One of the best uh, Funko Pops that Freddy FNAF done. Here's Flocked Funtime Foxy. It's gathered a little dust over the years, however. This is still a pretty good one. This, was ex this one was actually exclusive to Best Buy, so... Here it is, guys, your elusive best- What is that? That's dust. I can't tell. I think it's dust. Yeah, it's dust is just sticking to it, but yeah. This is the Flocked Funtime Foxy Pop. I like this one a lot. I think it looks good. Here's the Toy Cupcake. That, that's that's it. It's Toy Cupcake. I guess I'll also show the black light cupcake off. I bought it because it looks like Golden Cupcake. There you go. Here's also the Balloon Boy Funko Pop. His balloon warps really badly. I've tried to get it to stay up over the years, and it just doesn't. But yeah, it, it warps really bad. Here's the FNAF 4 Wave. Nightmare Freddy. He jingles like a maraca! I don't know why he does that, but yeah, he does. It was like that when I got him. Here's Nightmare Bonnie. Also a pretty decent looking one. Here's Nightmare Chica. I don't know why they made her eye blue and red. Her eye is silver and red. I did that for my plush, because all the Funko merch made it like that. Except for the mystery mini, oddly enough. I don't understand the inconsistency. Here is Nightmare Cupcake. Also a pretty cool Funko Pop. I forgot Nightmare Foxy. Well, forgot maybe a strong word. But yeah, there's Nightmare Foxy. Some people put him after the cupcake, some people don't, I don't know. Here's Jacko Chica. This is a cool one. It does not glow in the dark, however. Her counterpart, Jacko Bonnie, does. That's exclusive to GameStop, that's exclusive to Target, and this is exclusive to Barnes & Noble. 
Look at me spewing my facts. Next up is the sister location wave. Here's Circus Baby. I like this one. It, it definitely brings out her doll centric features. Her square head is also really funny. I'll see this now. Here's Jump Scare Baby. This was an exclusive to San Diego Comic Con shared with Hot Topic, I think. I'm not sure, but it definitely was a shared one. Yeah, it was San Diego Comic Con 2017, I think. Here is Funtime Foxy. I don't know why I'm doing this one next. But yeah, here's Funtime Fox. Again, I think the, the, the shiny plastic look looks good on these ones. Ah, God. Here's Ballora. This one looks very nice also. I don't know what it is. I think the FNAF, I think the FNAF works well in the Funko Pop style. The human characters of Funko, I don't think I would agree as much. However, I can't say much. I own a lot of them. <laughs> Foxy fell again. Anyway, here's Chase Ballora. This is the Chase Jump Scare Ballora. These are the only two Jump Scare ones I own. I never got Freddy or Foxy, so that's a shame. Stop falling! Whatever, who cares? Just lay him down. I don't even care anymore. Just lay him down. Here's Fun Time Freddy. I like this one. They did they did good detailing on the Bon Bon, though. I feel like this might I think this might be just the mold from the action figure. They just painted the eyes black. I'm gonna fact check that. I was right! Wow, that is like almost identical outside of the eyes. And I think also he's a slightly darker shade of blue, but that that is that is basically the exact same. Neat FNAF merch fact for ya. On the other hand, they actually made a full Bon Bon Pop, which is pretty cool. Especially because they didn't make a plush. This is very good for the Detached video. The first episode of Detached, guys, I used this Funko Pop instead of the Bon Bon. And also here's Lulbit. I believe this was a this was a New York Comic Con 2017 exclusive shared with Toys R Us. And it looks really cool. I like this. This is a good pop. This also used to be Froakies. He traded it to me for his jump scare, or for my second jump scare fun time Freddy Mystery Mini, and he gave me this Funko Pop of Lolbit, which is really thanks. Thanks, Froakie. I've done trades with other people, I swear. I mentioned the long laser. Here's a couple ones for the Twisted ones. Here's Twisted Freddy. I liked the way this one looked. I don't know. He had like a very snarly, like, bear like look to him, and I thought he looked good, so yeah, that's why I bought him. He's neat. Here's Twisted Wolf. I also really like this guy. I think his details are pretty nice on him. They didn't make action figures in the Twisted Ones, so it was nice to at least get Funko Pops of them. Here's Theodore. Yep, he's, uh, he's Theodore. He's good. See, this is actually the one where I fulfilled the prophecy and got all three of the toys. Theodore looks good. What about Stanley? Yeah. See, this is actually pretty decent looking. Like, it actually looks like a horse and not like a lump. Guys, it's Ella! Finally! Yeah, I used this in the 1.35 a.m. video also, but yeah, that's, that's cool that they bothered to bring Ella back for the, the Fazbear Frights books, but yeah, I really like this, this, this little, this little, this little Funko Pop. She looks good as a Funko Pop, I think. I think all three of these guys do, and I finally have the book toys together. Thank God. I never even read the novel trilogy. Why do I care? Anyways, here's two FNAF 6 Funko Pops. Here's the healthy one. I mean, this this just kind of makes sense. I mean, it's healthy. He's a little figure, fr fun time, voidy little guy, so it makes sense to make him as a Funko Pop. Also, Lefty, because, like, Lefty's a story-relevant character. I kind of like that they actually bother making him a different mold than the other ones. It's neat. And yeah, uh, ever since FNAF 6, they kind of stopped making FNAF Funko Pops, oddly enough. I am kind of surprised on that fact. Uh, they didn't come back until, I think, the tie-dye ones. And then after that, they made the Balloon Circus ones. So here is Balloon, or that's Clown Freddy. Here is Clown Foxy. Here is Balloon Bonnie. And here is Balloon Chica. I think they also made a Balloon Foxy Pop, too, but I didn't buy that one because I don't care. I'm gonna be honest, I bought these mostly for the video, but they're cute nonetheless. I like them. I would definitely buy the mini of the plushies over these guys, though, if it was down to getting certain balloon merch. And now we have the U2s! Better? Question mark. Hard to tell. These things are like three times the price of the Funko Pop, so it's really hard to tell. Anyways, here's Glamrock Freddy. I bought the U2s of the Security Breach guys because they, did, they didn't make Security Breach Pops or any good figures. So I was like, you know what, I want some figures of the Security Breach guys. So I bought the U2s. And I actually really like these guys, honestly. They're sculpted well, they're accurate. They have also stylized eyes, which is annoying, but whatever, they still look good. I can't say much, I bought the Funko Pops. Here's Glamrock Chica. I really love the pose she's in. I also just think her colors blend very well together, and I think she looks very cute. This is a good U2s. Here's Roxanne Wolf. I've been doing Monty normally, so I'm doing Roxy. Her hair looks especially really well sculpted and detailed. Yeah, this is a very good one. Good job, U2s, you made some good stuff. And here's Monty. Good grief, he's naked! Yeah, they, they, uh, they didn't give him pants for some reason. I don't know why they didn't. Thanks to you twos, you thunderheads. But yeah, other than that, this is a decent one. Definitely the worst out of the four, just by, by process of elimination, but 
It's still fine. Here's Vanny. I spent $100 on a collector's edition for this one. Just kidding. I got other stuff for it, too. And it definitely wasn't $100. I spent, I got it, like, marked down, thankfully. The box will be later in this video, along with the other stuff from the collector's edition. Hey, at least I didn't pay, like, secondhand prices for Vanny. That probably would have been more expensive than me buying the collector's edition secondhand in itself. Anyways, they made a wave two of the security breach figures, and why did I put her over here? Burn trap! This is like the only piece of burn trap merch we're ever gonna get, so that's why I bought it. And also, I just think it looks cool. Good job, burn trap, you did it. And lastly, we have the daycare attendant. I didn't buy the wet floor bot sign, sadly. I kind of wish I did, but it's whatever. I do like these guys, though. These guys are neat. I don't really know which side to display them on, though. Maybe, you know, maybe I should get one of those like jewelry rotating tables that I have like set to rotate entirely throughout the day. So, like, it's like this for 12 hours, and then like this for another 12 hours. Like, it spins like a nightlight. That'd go hard, but I, 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 I think that's probably really hard to do. Anyways, there is all of the FNAF vinyl figures. Here they are. Hmm. Do I do McFarlane's or Snaps next? Uh, all right. Okay, odd number, McFarlane, even number, it's Snaps. Snaps! All right, here is the uh, three Funko Snaps playsets I own. Uh, the hallway with Vanessa, the back room, and the office. So here's all my Funko Snaps. Here's Freddy. Uh, he looks pretty cool. I like him a lot. Obviously, the interchangeable phases. I'm not gonna go through all that. You can do your own research. I did another Funko Snap video where I did. So yeah, there's Bonnie. Here's Chica with Carl. And also there's Carl on the desk back there. You can see him right there. Foxy, and he's got the It's Me sign. He's awesome. Here's Springtrap and technically William Afton underneath. Fucking get the mask off. I'm so tired, guys. It's like three in the morning. Here's Toy Freddy. Look at this guy. Look at him. Look at him. He's so awesome. I love Toy Freddy. Toy Bonnie with the Bonnie guitar. Here's Toy Chica. Here's Nightmare Chica. I know we're jumping games pretty quick here, but yeah, there's, there's, there's Nightmare Chica. Mangle Snap would be cool, especially if they bother doing like all their limbs and stuff. Here's Circus Baby, which looks pretty neat. And we got Plush Trap as a little hand puppet. Here's uh, Eve on a Circus Baby with the blue eyes. It's just the endo head from the backstage set with the baby, the jump scare baby face on it. Here's Glamrock Freddy. And there's Glamrock Chica. She spin her head around. She go wee. Here's Monty. Looks pretty cool. I like his tail. And Vanny with the action figure knife because I wanted to give it to the Funko Snap because the stupid other one has uh, Vanessa's accessories. Um, she's ready to cut the pizza and shine the flashlight on the pizza because it's dark. But yeah, here's the Vanessa one. I like it a lot. Our only Vanessa merch. A little pizza cutter. It's pretty cool. I guess technically, if we want to count these, uh, here's Shattered Monty and Shattered Chica. They're te technically different characters. And the other faces that don't don't correspond to another character. Here's all the Funko Snaps. The final boss. My idiocy. Oh, God, I almost collided. Anyway, with my idiocy... I forgot that the McFarland figures were up there, so I have to get them down without breaking any of them. Wish me luck. Okay, well, I got all the stuff down from my shelf, and actually this is the box of the remaining parts. Uh, I kept all the minifigures out of here, but all of the remaining sets, I haven't opened this box in I think actual years, so there might be a lot of dust on these. Yep. It's gonna take a while for me to reassemble them in like at least somewhat decent fashion, so I'm gonna do that now! Alright, I did it. I built them all again. Well, not not completely, like these are just in chunks. There's, I I wasn't gonna take them apart brick by brick because I'm, I'm not what you would call a master builder. I couldn't figure out what these pieces went to. Do you want to figure it out? Okay, here we go. We're doing it in this corner. I guess I'll do a warning for the next part. Uh, if there is such thing as a phobia or fear of dust, I don't think you're going to like this part. You might want to skip to the conclusion, because there is a lot of dust on these. <laughs> Starting off with wave one, we have the show stage. I'm going to start with the sets first and then move to the figures, but yeah, there's a show stage. 
And that little arcade has BB's Air Adventure on it. Whoa, little Easter egg. That's cool. I don't know what happened to the door. Here's the backstage, AKA parts and service, which I guess I should probably switch these around if I want to be game accurate here. That's so inefficient, whatever. Here's Pirate Cove. I'm not gonna keep doing this bit. There's Pirate Cove with the little, the little, the little star curtains. There's paper, there's a wheel in the back. It's pretty cool. Out of order sign. It's nice, good set. Here is the uh, office set with Golden Freddy. And uh, originally they were gonna put Tire Track Freddy in this set. I'm kinda sad we didn't get Tire Track Freddy, I'm gonna be honest, guys. And then for uh, FNAF 2, we have Party Room 2, I'm gonna guess. And Party Room 4. Yeah, look at that, a little, little detail. They got little drawings and the, the, the posters. And this is where the Paper Pals went, but I'm gonna show them off later. <laughs> Sorry guys, the dust is getting to me. Here's the game area from FNAF 2. Look, it's got a carousel, and it works, kinda. Like, the, the little guys go up and down. It might be hard to tell, but they go up and down. It's pretty cool. Here's the prize counter, and the, po the box does open and close, but it's very fragile, so I'm not gonna do that. Here's another random wall. <laughs> Here's three of the four pieces of the office. The one vent, the other vent, Wait, left vent, right vent. I know this is the left one because it has that poster on it. I'm a nerd. And here's the middle. So I guess I can move this here and then... There we go. Uh, I stopped collecting the, the McFarlane stuff about the second to last wave, so I don't have the middle with Wither, Golden Freddy, but honestly, that's probably the set I want the most because that's the one FNAF 2 character I'm missing, which is a bit of a shame. And lastly, for the FNAF 2 sets, we have Parts and Service, which is awesome. This set's awesome. It's got a closet. And there's an endoskeleton in there, and a bunch of, uh, of the masks in there, too. The exit sign fell. Look, you can tell between wave one and wave two, they swapped the exit sign. Like, like in wave one, it was just a sticker on a flat, like a gray plate, and then they actually made it a molded piece in the wave two. Here is the office from FNAF 3. Got the little box with a, an attempt at a paper pal. Here is, uh, this piece, which goes here, just outside of the office. I will actually point out the, the pieces in here. Uh, I believe that most of these molds were made before they even made most of the toys, so a lot of these are a little inaccurate, but they also look kind of similar to the game, like how the pieces look a little, like, slightly off than the actual toy masks. Here's a wall! This is this actually had Phantom Chica's arcade in it, I'm pretty sure, but yeah, there, there's a wall. I figured out, I think this had the mask for Phantom Chica on it. I'm too lazy to put it together. Now we're on to FNAF 4. Uh, here is the bed. Yeah, here's the left side of the bedroom with the little, they got the little fold and the caterpillar toys. There's a little run clock and a purple fan. Look at that, whoa. Uh, hello, hello, uh, welcome to Freddy Fan Bear Pizza. Um, <laughs> you let MatPat in here? That dude can lift, he stole a pizza oven. <laughs> That's been my favorite TikTok as of recent. Here's the closet. This set sucks. I putting it together was so back together was so awful, and I got PTSD of putting it together for the first time. It was so bad. It was so bad. And it came with such a dog shit figure. We'll get to you. Here's a window and a desk and a clock and a wall, but it has a chair. And another wall! It's the plush trap corridor with the chair. Yeah. Here's circus control. And the Funtime Auditorium stages. I guess Funtime Auditorium and Ballora Gallery, respectively. And then here is the big thing in the middle. I forgot the name it was called. But they got the human heads in there. And the, the, the fortune teller and the inner mask. I have to point out the human heads because apparently, according to the character cyclopedia, they're characters! They have less than 20 frames of screen time, but I guess apparently they count! Here's the private room. I actually like this set a lot. You can see the FNAF 4, the cameras for the FNAF 4 on there. It's really neat. And the keypad, where you type 1983. Yeah. I will say this piece is cool. It's like we actually got a monitor piece. It's neat. Actually, I don't think the original office had that. I'm gonna fact check that. Ah! Uh, nope! I'm right again. Here's the best McFarland set ever, the scooping room. This one is so awesome. Comes with all the system location animatronic parts and you can press it and make it scoop. This is so cool. If 
Funko could never. This is so awesome. I love scooping my, uh... It's me, Ennard Ocean Man, from Planet of Brookies. Give me views! And I promised I wasn't a personal attack. And the only, like, modern-day set I got, because I found it on clearance at GameStop, like, two years ago, for, like, $7, was the, the salvage set from the last wave they made. And I guess you can say this is a Henry minifigure right here, this little tiny guy. That's Henry. So that's all the sets I own. But what about the minifigures? That's like what people actually care about. Here's Freddy Fazbear. I like these guys. I actually think the McFarlane sets are pretty underrated. They were kind of crappy sets themselves. Like I know a lot of people, I'm not a super big Lego person. However, I did build Legos in my time. That, they're very fragile. They're like kind of crappily made. Like they're, they're detailed and very like, I don't know how to put it. They're very detailed, but they're not exactly high quality. Like, the plastic Lego uses is definitely way more high quality, prone to sticking together better, and just generally, like, holds together, I think, with time. Uh, however, these are much more detailed than if Lego did it, and I think, honestly, I wouldn't want Lego to do them because they wouldn't bother making unique molds or, like, bother putting this much detail into the sets. However, as I stated, they are very fragile, so you have to be careful if you ever have these. But they're very expensive on the second-hand market, so I doubt you will ever get them if you don't have them now. I'm sorry. Maybe you'll find one in a clearance bin at GameStop like I did. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, Freddy Fazbear. This guy's Mike. He's cool. There's Freddy. Go right there. Next up is Bonnie the Bunny with the copyrighted guitar! Even though there was one over there too. There was also a copyrighted guitar and an action figure too. But you know, yeah, there's a copyrighted guitar. It's a good Bonnie. They made him purple like he should be. He's good. I like him. I like his boink stare. He looks cool. Uh, next up is Chica. This guy's neat too. The cupcake's a little, uh, a little zonked out, but other than that, this is a good figure. Thank God, because the prototype images for these guys were rough. I remember they were very rough. I'll probably flash a couple images on screen. Next up is Foxy. I like him. He's cool. I believe this chest piece has some endoskeleton underneath it. Let me look. Yeah, now I have to put him back together. But I guess this is a good opportunity to show you that yes, the masks come off and they all have little like endoskeleton parts. It's really neat. All the FNAF figures do this, I think. Except for maybe like the ultimate custom eye anime Foxy. I don't know if that one does it. Um, but yeah, that uh that 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 was the only ultimate custom night merch I think we ever got. Like ever. Unless you count that poster. Next up is Golden Freddy. I like this one. The wash looks good on this. I think it looks very solid. I'm trying to see if I can get the focus better. There we go. Look at him. I might have to hold all the incoming figures like that. Here's Toy Freddy. Uh, a good shade of brown. Could be more orange, but, you know, it, it, it's not quite as bad as Funko. I think it works with this, this at least, minifigures, like, look. He's good. I like him. Get the microphone. Here's Toy Bonnie. I know they released a, a show stage set with the toys uh, later in a wave I didn't buy, but, like, it had, like, Toy Bonnie with the guitar, Toy Chica with the beak, and Toy Freddy with the, bra the black eyes, which is pretty neat. I think that's cool. I don't have any of those, though, so I only got these ones. Here's Toy Chica. Beakless and eyeless. It's a good figure. Her panties aren't painted on the back, though. She's butt naked, guys. What the hell? Put some pants on! I say as the boys don't have any pants on either. Here's Mangle? I'm missing a piece. No, I'm not. I'm stupid. I, I have all the pieces, yeah. No, yeah, I have all the pieces of Mangle. However, this Mangle and the Nightmare Mangle figures are both really fragile. Also, this one has green eyes. However, they did get her body right, so, you know, that's cool. At least they made the body, like, look good. It looks right. And her hand is backwards because it's the only way she can stand. And she's still not gonna do it, though, because this is carpet! Here's BB. I don't really like this figure all that much. The hair looks bad. It's black for some reason. It just kind of throws off the whole look. I don't know why. He just looks very off. Um, but yeah, he's not the worst, I guess. He, 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 again, he's not, he's not the worm. Yeah, this figure's not bad. He's good. Here's the puppet. They made a pretty odd choice to make the, uh, make the legs like a, they, these are all one by one pieces, like one by one Lego pieces or like one by one plates, and they're all stacked on top of each other, which makes her very prone to breaking. However, uh, what well, breaking, breaking apart, not like breaking in half, but you know. This is still a pretty good build, though. I like this minifigure, and the face is a good mold. Take a bit of a detour before I get to the withers. Here's the Paper Pals. Uh, these all came in the... Uh, these all came in the set with the party room, and you have all, all three of them. Uh, the, the, the Ban, the Bonnie, and the Bear. I think this is the one of the only two pieces of Paper Pals merch we got. I think the only other one is the Mystery Mini. Here's Withered Freddy. And this one's pretty standard, but I mean, they made him different enough from FNAF 1 Freddy to warrant it, I think. And plus, come on, they couldn't just not make Withered Freddy even if he wasn't that different. Withered Freddy's too awesome to be skipped out on. Here's Withered Bonnie. Uh, for some reason, mine has a weird, like, paint splotch in the middle. I don't 
don't know why. I don't think that dot's supposed to be there, but other than that, this one looks pretty good. I like the mold. The face looks nice, or <laughs> lack thereof. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty good one. I like this one a lot. Solid. Here's Wither Chica, which oddly was from Wave 1. Uh, you can kind of tell that this is a Wave 1 figure, just due to the lack of an overall, like, wash on the paint, and just generally more unde- more- less detail than the other Withers, but yeah, this one's good. Could have added wires to the mouth, but eh. At least it gapes open. Here's Withered Foxy from Parts and Service. But yeah, here he is. Looks cool. I like how he's in this like, specific position. However, they copied the mold from Phantom Foxy, so that's why his mouth kind of looks a little funny. I guess I technically forgot this guy. This is the endoskeleton. He applies to any of the games, technically, but he he's still cool. I never really said we never got, um, we're never gonna get security breach ones of these guys. I think some stuff like DJ Music Man would be a really cool Lego build, but anyway, here's Shadow Bonnie. I'm happy they bothered to make his teeth different. That, that, that That's a very nice touch, considering this is mostly just a repaint, but he's he's pretty cool. I like him a lot. He's a good figure. And here's Shadow Freddy, the only withered Shadow Freddy merch we've ever gotten, which is really nice that they bothered to just take game accurate, because, again, I think this is just a repaint of their Phantom Freddy, but either way, they're using their repaints to their advantage. It's not a total repaint. They have the leg. We also have, uh, for the masks, um, these are just in my hand because uh, I usually just set them in front of the FNAF 3 section of the display. And they go there and they just kind of chill. Yeah, I can just, uh, here. You can have Freddy. You can have Bonnie. You can have Foxy. You can have Jinka. On to FNAF 3, the spring trap. This figure sucks. I don't know. This figure just kind of sucks. It's definitely a very big showing of early McFarlane. They messed up the feet. They messed up the eyes. They snout too long. I don't know what happened here. Like, ugh, we're so close, man. McFarlane made pretty consistently good stuff. It's a damn shame because there's just so few good spring trap figures out there. Why is everyone messing him up? He's like the fan favorite. Maybe he wasn't back when the back when this was made but he is now here's phantom freddy and guys look he's missing a leg like god intended this is an ongoing debate with my friends uh whether or not phantom freddy has one or two legs um voice your opinions in the comments i'm interested get people talking what do you think anyway and then back to the next thing here's phantom foxy uh he looks pretty good i like that they bought to actually take his arm off and he's the right shade of red like a red dirty red i like him but yeah actually it seems like his head is actually a reverse it, it's kind of weird it's both reused and not like it's but it's they're both of these heads are on a slant however one of the eye patches is open but they're slanting different ways it's very bizarre it's like a repaint but also not it's it's weird here's phantom chica technically this is the this was just kind of a, a build from the set but it has phantom chica on it so i'm gonna count this as the phantom chica figure because there is no other phantom chica figure and here's phantom bb Look, they made him light, like how he is supposed to. Actually, I don't think he's supposed to look like this technically, but it looks better than the plush. Good lord. Plush is bad. God, my hand is like covered in dust. It's like coarse. I hate this. Maybe I'm the one with the fear of dust. Here is Nightmare Freddy. I gotta like do this every time. Here's Nightmare Freddy. The legs are a little under detailed, but other than that, this is a pretty good figure. I think the head mold's actually very, very good. I also liked that the, the, the Nightmares had teeth go all the way around the back of the head. It was just really funny to me. I don't know why, it's just a funny detail. Here's Nightmare Bonnie. Also uh, indicative of the lack of detail on the legs, but eh. Good head mold. Spine piece looks good. He's nice. I forgot the Freddles guys, my bad. I like the Freddles especially because they actually bothered to make them all have different positions. Uh, I don't think literally any other company would have done that, so good on you, McFarlane, for making, like, them actually all different a little bit. You can kind of tell. I believe these are only separate pieces of Freddle merch, so that's nice. Here's Nightmare Chica, also with Nightmare Cupcake. Thank God the Nightmare Cupcake's a little more detailed than the FNAF 1 Cupcake, because good lord. Um, but yeah, this one's nice. Thank God they bothered to detail the legs. This is easily the best Nightmare figure by proxy. But yeah, back of the back of it, it's nice, it's good. Very good. They actually did her eyes right, too, so that's good. Here's Nightmare Foxy. I also like this one a lot. The pants aren't nearly as noticeable, because they're still brown and, like, have a decent wash on them, so it's not nearly as noticeable as the other ones when they don't have any detail, but it still looks good. For some reason, I don't know why his, bo his bottom jaw, like, extends out here, but not out here. And I think it's like that on all the figures. I have no idea why it's like that. Maybe it's not, actually, because mine looks broken, but I definitely remember getting it like this. I don't know, if anyone else owns the Nightmare Fox and McFarlane figure, let me know. Here's Plush Trap. This is also one of the later ones I got, randomly. But yeah, I like him a lot. This is a good Plush Trap figure. 
Could be a little more detailed, but eh, it's still pretty decent. Here's Nightmare. This guy's awesome. I'm sad I never got Nightmare Fredbear, but this guy's really cool either way. This is a good mold. Just a solid figure all around. It's nice. It's really weird that they made Nightmare before Nightmare Fredbear. It's just bizarre to me. Here's Nightmare BB. This one's always been really funny to me, just his very stern expression, and also just <laughs> the teeth go all the way around on both the top and bottom jaw. It's like he's like, it's like a, like a vortex dude. Come closer. Help me count my teeth. I'm sorry, guys, I don't know what that was. You. This figure's doggy. It's so fragile. It sucks. I lost a foot. So the whole leg I lost in general. This figure sucks. Everyone says it sucks. It's so fragile. Hopefully mine is not broken as bad, but it did break a little bit. I had to hot glue this back on because it just wasn't it wasn't coming on correctly. It just, it just sucks. This figure's doggy. This figure sucks. Worst McFarlane figure by far. That one so bad. Thank God I've been blessed with not having it break, but this little this little teeny they, they, they put this together with this little teeny little joint. And it breaks from 99% of people. Thankfully, I'm within the 1% that it doesn't happen for. And lastly, here's Nightmarion. Or on? Nightmarion. This is actually a really good figure. This is also one of their very, their much later ones. But yeah, I actually like this one a lot. This one's just very solid. The head mold's very, very good on this one. Good job, McFarlane. All right, the last major game, mostly. We don't count FNAF 6. Actually, wait, I'm gonna go over the plushies first. These little plushies are very adorable. I'm gonna give each of them their own segment. Here's Freddy. There he is, look at him, look at this little guy, he's so cute, the little goober, he's so small and little and cute. Here's Bonnie, you can see his big old teeth. Here's Chicken, god, the cupcakes details are so small. Why is the, okay, they bothered doing that, like actually a millimeter cupcake, but they couldn't bother making this any better? Like, come on. The freaking Chica plushie is about the whole, the, the, the entire Chica plushie is pretty much the size of that cupcake in general. Forgot to mention I have two Freddies. Here's Foxy, and bro is pressed. Hold on, let me get that, let me get that, let me get that focus. Come on. There you go. Bro is upset. He's mad. He mad. He thought school was only one day. He mad. And here's Fredbear, which this one's actually really cool because it has the microphone, or the, the, the walkie-talkie from the private room because it went with the private room set. It's a good, it's a good plush. I, I'm happy they, a good plush. It's a good minifigure of a plush. Now on back to actual minifigures. Here's Circus Baby. This one's all right. The coloring's a little off, but the mold is pretty good. You can see her teeth in there, like, very barely, but it's kind of hard to see the shadow. Here's Ballora. I actually think this figure is really good. They got all the colors down, the proportions, the body. It just, it just looks very good. This is a very solid one. Here's Funtime Foxy. This is pretty good, too. Paint's a little off, but other than that's good. I like that they bother giving him the tail. Funtime Freddy. Bon Bon looks pretty good. I mean, as good as that little, little guy's gonna do. I think even the mystery mini one's bigger. Yeah. Here's Jump Scare Funtime Foxy. I think this is the only time a different company besides Funko ever made a jump scare thing. But yeah, this is pretty neat. I think this came with the control module. I remember the name of the thing in the middle. Here's Bitty Bab. This is just a simple one piece. Like, it does, it's not like a, like a, you can't move or anything. But yeah, this is really good. I like this one. I think this is the only piece of Bitty Bab merch that isn't jump scaring. Here's Magician and Little Joe. They came in the circus control set. These guys. Here's Ennard. God, this minifigure's awesome. This is the best McFarlane figure. It's so good. Same thing with the scooping room. This whole set was just awesome. Look how much detail they put into this little guy. Oh my god. The wires, the eyeballs, everything's painted to perfection. You can even take off the mask. I can't do it with one hand though. Hold on. There. That's so cool. That's awesome. They didn't have to do that, but they did. Just look at that, man. Actual perfection. 10 out of 10. I can't get it back on with one hand either. Boom. Here's a little bit. And this is just pretty much a simple repaint of Funtime Foxy. You can see the eyebrows again, but yeah. At least they gave her the hook. Good job. And here's Yendo. This one's not bad. I like him. He's got, a, he's got, at least he's got some good, like, he's got a good sculpt with all, the, like, the wires and stuff. It looks neat. <sighs> all right, guys. I, I may have been wrong about Nightmare Mangle. This is easily the worst McFarlane figure. <laughs> God, it's just... Do I even need to say it? I gave him, like, wire legs, so he, like, he can't stand up. He doesn't have, like, the wire feet, like, the wire pile, like, on the feet, like normal Freddy actually does have. The entered parts are completely unpainted. It's literally almost entirely reused molds. Like, this is Yendo's arm and chest. It's Ennard's left, right arm. The wires from Withered Chica. 
The head is the only unique mold, and it doesn't even look that good. Like, it's passable at best. This figure sucks. No wonder it was the last freaking wave. I do want McFarlane to come back. Actually, that's not that bad when you put them to the side like that. That's, that's, that's okay. Perhaps I treated you too harshly. Okay, you went from, like, a 3 out of 10 to, like, a 5. Alright, here is the box for the collector's edition of uh, Security Breach. This one was for PS5. You have all the little signatures in the front. The big Pizza Plex logo. Can you tell this was bought secondhand? It's like, it's bad. Oh my! But yeah, um, yeah, there it is. This is, this is why it, you can tell this was bought secondhand for a reason, because the box is in really bad condition. You can go back here. Then maybe the moon can even look out at you. Come on. No, wait, I got it! Speaking of that, here's Security Breach. This is the steelbook uh, with the game on PS5. Uh, again, I have a PS5 and no games. Also that. Stickers. I want to use these so bad, but like, the collector now. No, I'll, I'll probably put these on my PC at some point. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. One day. More stuff from the collector's edition. These little pins are the plushies. These are kind of cute. I kind of wish they were more like like a like an enamel pin and less of like a metallic pin. Unless I'm wrong and this is enamel, in which case uh, I'm sorry. And also the crappy Mr. Hippo fridge magnet. Yes, this is an actual magnet. It does stick on things. It's pretty cool. I like that. Do more in-universe merch. That's neat. Here's all the collectible hex cards. Here's the Freddy one. If you probably would have seen these in the uh, the hex jump scares video I did. Bonnie. Uh, here's Chica. Here's Foxy. Uh, here is Fredbear. And then here's Spring Bonnie. Purple guy. Purple guy! And here's the second Spring Bonnie, one from the dupe. Here is a set of five of the uh, little, I think these are called Just Toys, of these little minifigures. I filmed a, a video of me breaking these open, but the filming didn't go very well, so I think that video is lost to time, uh, sadly, but I still have the little minifigures from it, so yeah, there's all five of them, except for the gold Freddy, which I did not get, sadly. And lastly, the last piece of merch in my entire FNAF collection is... Games Springtrap. It's a metallic Springtrap pint-sized hero. Which is canonically the closest piece of merch we will ever get to Game Springtrap being real. Yeah. He's got a butt! And with that, that is my entire Five Nights at Freddy's merch collection. That is everything I've gotten over the last seven years that I still have in my possession. Dear Lord, that was rough. I imagine you all uh, have probably been watching this video for a really long time. In which case, if you made it to the end, thank you. Genuinely, thank you uh, for watching this much time and giving me ad revenue for, for doing this, because Jesus Christ, this took forever. You think watching the video took a long time? Think about how long it took to film it. But yeah, this is everything. This is all of it. All of it is here. Each and every piece of it. <laughs> but yeah, from plushies to figures to pops to mini to minis to, to, to McFarlane toys, Lego sets to snaps, it's everything. It's all of it. Everything I got. <sighs> I'm tired. This is right before I'm recording the outro, but I just realized. Actually, right after I recorded the outro, but I actually just realized I have to count everything. That's like a bit I do in these videos. God damn it, this is gonna take forever. You guys better be thankful for this. Probably off by a little bit, because it's five in the morning, I have a lot of misorganized counting, and I'm really tired. Um, but, I think I'm 550. I think I'm about 550 pieces of FNAF merch, so it's over 500, so I can put that in the title. But yeah, guys, happy FNAF anniversary. I'm gonna go to bed, and then edit this tomorrow, and have it uploaded by the 8th. Anyways, guys. Have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good whatever time it is. And remember, it wasn't an obsession. You just had fun. Or maybe it was. I don't know.
Guys, I thought hyperfixation was supposed to end at some point. I've been on this FNAF train for like nine years now. What the hell? One last turnaround of everything. Whoa! Okay, goodbye, everybody. Whoa.